You ever feel like you're stuck in your English and you need a challenge to increase your English vocabulary and become more confident? Well, I have just the answer for you. This video applies to all levels of you that are trying to learn English and be more confident. Let me explain more below. I'm Grant. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a business English confidence coach. I've never been a teacher. I've only worked in business. In the last many years, I've been coaching CEOs how to become more confident using English so they can grow their business. Now, I'm here. I'm here to help millions of you become confident using English so you can change your life, get the job that you want, have the career you want, be happy in life and let English be that tool that'll help you get there. Welcome to episode two, Learn English with Story, Maya's New American Workplace. If you saw the first episode, feel free to skip ahead. You know what to do. If you didn't see the first episode, I think you can find a link to it up here. And you can go back into that first episode and take a look, and it'll give you lots of details of what you need to do. You don't need to go to that first episode. I'll give you everything you need to do here. I'll go through that quickly for you so you have an idea of what you need to do. So maybe you can watch this episode first, and then go back and watch the first episode. It's just fine. I built these so they don't need to be watched in order. This is a very long video, and I think you should look at it as a full course in English to get everything out of it. It might take you many, many, many hours to get through it. It should take you many hours to get through it if you do it right. I really believe in something that I say is go slow to go fast. And really what that means is you need to put in the work, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. But when you do it that way, you become confident much faster. This video is a perfect example of trying to go slow to go fast. Let me explain a little bit more. To build confidence, I use my own system called deep learning, where I will give you a vocabulary word. I'll give you the pronunciation of that word. I'll give you a definition as it's being used. And then I'll give you an example sentence using that word. And then I'll ask you to say all of this out loud. Because it's one thing to learn English, but it's a whole different thing to be able to use English. And what I'm trying to do is help you become confident using English, not learning English. And there's a huge difference. So I believe there's only one small step to learn English. <laughs> the more difficult part is to speak English fluently and confidently. And I designed this video to give you an opportunity to do a lot of shadow English speaking practice with me. And uh, I know that the combination of learning English vocabulary with my deep learning method and also using English shadowing practice will quickly build your confidence. Let me give you an idea of what we're trying to do here. What I've done is I have written three stories. The three stories are identical. They're the same stories. The only difference is that the stories become much more difficult because I've increased the vocabulary difficulty. And so this gives you a great opportunity to understand the story and then add some more difficult vocabulary and then add some really difficult vocabulary. But I will give you all of the definitions. I'll go through my deep learning. And that's what takes so long to get through this entire video. So I call this the fluency ladder. And I want you to climb the fluency ladder. Where you're going to start is at a basic English level. Now, this level can be really difficult for some people that are not confident using English at all. Somebody that's new to English, 
somebody that's just not confident using English. Well, the basic English level is going to be very difficult for you, but you can do it. And when we climb the fluency ladder, the next step is the advanced English level. Now, this level will probably be difficult for everybody. Some people, it'll be a little bit difficult. Some people, it'll be really difficult. But again, I will go through this. I will read the story. Same story, just more difficult words. And then I will go through my deep learning vocabulary method with you and give you everything you need to do to be able to climb to the final level. The final level is what I call the eloquent level. Eloquent is a beautiful word. You would like to speak in a very eloquent way. It means fluent, but it means more than that. It's just this beautiful ability to use a language where somebody is so eloquent in the way that they can speak. That's where I want you to go in your future. So let me give you an example of how this works. And I'm going to take one short little portion of this story. And so I'm going to start at story one, the basic English level, and I'll read this sentence to you. And in this story, this is a story about a girl named Maya. Maya has just moved to the U.S. and started working in a U.S. company. And guess what? They only speak English. Maya is not a native English speaker, and she's not confident in her English. Maybe you can relate. So that's what this story is about. As you go through the basic English level, you'll understand the story completely. I highly recommend you start there so you understand the story. Okay, so here's a sample of a sentence coming out of the basic English level. And it reads, Maya smiled, feeling a bit better. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm happy to be here and ready to learn. Everybody understands that. It's a basic level. No problem, right? Well, let's climb the fluency ladder and go to the advanced level and see what it sounds like here. With a grateful smile, Maya replied, Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm eager to embrace this challenge and contribute to our team's success. For some of you, that'll be really normal. For others, whew, difficult. But I will go through, give you all the vocabulary you need. And one way that I want you to go through and do this is to read a paragraph at a time. And then go and read and go through the vocabulary with me and use my deep learning method. And once you understand that vocabulary, go back to the story and read that sentence or read that paragraph again. Read it out loud and feel the confidence that you can have. Once you understand the pronunciation, the definition of the word, how to use it, when you understand those things and you go back to the story, whoo, magic happens. From here, we've gone to the first two levels of the fluency ladder. Let's climb to the third level of the fluency ladder, which is the eloquent level. Here. The sample is, Maya's response permeated with gratitude and a renewed zest for the challenges ahead. I'm profoundly grateful, Mr. Smith. I am committed to leveraging this opportunity to its fullest potential and contributing to our collective goals. She articulated with confidence. Wow. That is going to give all of you some difficulty. Some, it'll give a lot of difficulty. <laughs> and there's a big difference here. I find a lot of people say, yeah, I know that word. And then I ask and say, well, you ever use it? No, I never use it. My goal for you is to get you to start using all of these words. Take your time. Go slow to go fast. Are you ready to start? Are you ready to start this giant challenge? I'm going to start story one. You're welcome. If you're at a more advanced level and you want to skip story one, go ahead. Go to story two. You'll find all the timestamps in the description and in the comments below. So 
it's okay to go ahead. But I really recommend that you start with story one. So you have a complete understanding of what this story is about. And maybe there's a word or two in there that you don't feel comfortable with if you're at an advanced or eloquent level. Okay, let's begin. Here we go. Story one. Once upon a time in a faraway land, there lived a business professional named Maya. Maya was very good at her job. She loved to solve problems, talk to people, and make plans. But there was something new on her path. Maya got a job in a big U.S. company. This was both exciting and scary. Exciting because it was a big step in her career. And scary because the company did all its work in English. Maya knew English, but it wasn't her first language. On her first day, Maya woke up early. She felt a mix of butterflies and eagles in her stomach. Butterflies for the nerves, eagles for the courage, she thought to herself. She got ready, wearing her favorite suit, a symbol of her strength. She looked at herself in the mirror, took a deep breath and said, you can do this, Maya. The office was big, full of light. People moved fast, their faces focused. Maya felt a little lost, but remembered what her mother always said, one step at a time. She walked to the reception and gave her name. The receptionist smiled and said, welcome, Maya. Let me show you to your desk. The desk was nice with a view of a small park. It made her feel a bit at home. Soon, her new boss, Mr. Smith, came to meet her. He was friendly and spoke slowly for her. We're happy to have you, Maya. Don't worry about the language. You'll pick it up as you go. We are all here to help. Maya smiled, feeling a bit better. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm happy to be here and ready to learn. The days began to pass. Maya worked hard. She listened to how her colleagues talked and tried to speak like them. Sometimes she made mistakes. One day, she was in a meeting and used the wrong word. Everyone looked confused. Maya felt her face become hot. She wanted to disappear. But then something nice happened. A colleague named John said, Oh, you mean budget, not baguette, right? Everyone laughed, including Maya. John helped Maya a lot. He explained things she didn't understand and even shared his notes with her. English is just a language, not a measure of your intelligence, he said. Maya felt grateful for John's kindness. Months went by and Maya became more comfortable. She still made mistakes, but now she laughed at them too. She learned that making mistakes was part of learning. Her colleagues liked her for her hard work and her willingness to learn. Maya felt like she was part of a big family. One day, Maya was asked to lead a project. This was a big deal. She was nervous but excited. She worked with her team, planning, solving problems, and talking to clients. The project was a success. Her team celebrated. Mr. Smith came to her and said, Great job, Maya. We're proud of you. That night, Maya called her mother. Mom, I did it. I led a project and it went well, she said. Her mother's voice was warm and proud. I knew you could do it, Maya. You're stronger than you think. Maya hung up the phone and looked out her window. The stars were bright in the sky. She thought about her journey, the challenges, and the victories. She realized that she had grown, not just as a professional, but as a person. She had crossed a bridge from fear to confidence, from uncertainty to courage. Maya's story is a reminder that stepping into the unknown can be scary, but it's also where we grow. It's about trying, making mistakes, and trying again. It's about finding friends in new places and learning every day. And most importantly, it's about remembering that our value doesn't come from speaking a language perfectly, 
but from our courage to speak it at all. And this is where I am so proud of all of you to have the courage to speak English. It's really an amazing thing to me. So I am very proud of all of you. As I go through this story and I present it, I don't sound like a robot. I want you to use this opportunity, like I said before, for some English shadow practice experience. It's really, really good to listen to my voice and to try to shadow and practice English by trying to say it the same way. And for many of you, it's going to be really difficult. Probably never spoke English with any feeling before. So even if you're at a very advanced level, I know. You don't always speak English with some feeling in it. <laughs> so use this opportunity. It's more than just learning vocabulary. Use it. Shadow practice your English with me. Make this a really great speaking opportunity for you. Okay, now I'm going to go through all the vocabulary from this story. For those of you that feel that your English is a, at a higher level, please. Continue on. You can find all the timestamps in the comments below or maybe in the description of this video. And go ahead. Go to where you need to go with this, where you're comfortable with it. For the rest of you, I'm going to go through each of these words that I think either have difficult pronunciation, maybe they have multiple meanings, or maybe they're just a little bit difficult for some of you at the basic English level. The rest of you, Continue on, go climb the fluency ladder and go up to the advanced level. <laughs> the rest of you, let's go through my deep learning method and see what we can do with all of these vocabulary words. Far away. Far away is pronounced far away. It means distant or remote in space or time. An example sentence could be, the company's headquarters were located in a faraway land, making communication and coordination challenging. In the story, it was used like this. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a professional named Maya. Path. It's pronounced path. It means the route or direction along which someone or something moves or progresses. An example sentence could be, the entrepreneur created her own path in the business world, not following traditional norms. In the story, it was used, but there was something new on her path. Maya got a job in a big U.S. company. U.S. <laughs> Sometimes, if you're not comfortable with English, you have difficulty saying this. So it's just U and then the letter S. U.S. It means an abbreviation for the United States, a country located in North America. An example sentence could be, the company expanded its operations to the U.S. market, aiming to reach a broader audience. In the story, the word was used, but there was something new on her path. Maya got a job in a big U.S. company. Exciting. Now, in Grant's crazy pronunciation guide, I think it's exciting. E-C-K. Exciting. Somebody got in an argument with me in episode one saying it should be ick. I-C-K. Exciting. Nobody's ever said it. Exciting in their life. So, to me, it's ek, ek, exciting, exciting. It means causing strong feelings of enthusiasm, anticipation, or eagerness. An example sentence could be, the announcement of the new product launch was met with exciting cheers from the team. In the story, it was used as exciting because it was a big step in her career and scary because the company did all its work in English. Scary. <laughs> I think of it as scare. E. Scary. It means causing fear or anxiety. Frightening. An example sentence could be 
The prospect of public speaking can be scary for many people. In the story, it was used as exciting because it was a big step in her career, and scary because the company did all its work in English. Woke up. Woke up. It means to become conscious after sleeping, to arise from sleep, <laughs> what you do in the morning. Example sentence could be, she woke up early to prepare for the important presentation. In the story, it was used as, on her first day, Maya woke up early. Mix. Many people struggle with this pronunciation, so I wrote it out as M-I-C-K-S. Mix. Mix. It means a combination or blend of different elements or qualities. An example sentence could be, the recipe called for a mix of spices to create the perfect flavor. In the story, it was used as she felt a mix of butterflies and eagles in her stomach. Butterflies. A feeling of nervousness or excitement, often experienced as a fluttering sensation <laughs> in the stomach. An example sentence could be, before her job interview, she felt butterflies in her stomach. In the story, it was used as she felt a mix of butterflies and eagles in her stomach. Eagles. I think of it as e and then gulls. Eagles. The definition is a feeling of courage or strength, often associated with a sense of determination or resilience. An example sentence could be, despite her fears, she found the eagles within her and faced the challenges head on. In the story, it was used as she felt a mix of butterflies and eagles in her stomach. Stomach. This one's hard to pronounce for most people. So I look at it as stum. There's no word stum, but stum. And then ack, ack. Stomach, stomach, stomach. The definition is the internal organ in the body where food is digested, often associated with sensations such as hunger, fullness, or nervousness. An example sentence could be, eating too quickly can sometimes cause discomfort in the stomach. In the story, it was used as, she felt a mix of butterflies and eagles in her stomach. Nerves. <laughs> Nerves. I couldn't think of a way to make a good pronunciation for this, so I just left it as nerves. Nerves. <laughs> the definition is the feeling or worry or anxiety, especially about an upcoming event or situation. Example could be his nerves got the better of him during the job interview. In the story, it was used as butterflies for the nerves, eagles for the courage, she thought to herself on her first day at the new job. Courage. I think it's two sounds. Cur, K-E-R-R, cur, and then adj. I don't know how you spell adj, so I just put A-J, adj. Courage, courage. It means the ability to do something that frightens you or facing difficulty without showing fear. An example sentence could be, it took a lot of courage for David to move to a new country and start a new job. In the story, it was used as butterflies for the nerves, eagles for the courage, she thought to herself on her first day at the new job. Favorite, favorite. So when I say this, I don't think of fave or right. It's favorite. 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 It means the one thing that someone likes or enjoys the most out of a selection or similar things. An example sentence could be her favorite color is blue. In the story, it was she got ready wearing her favorite suit. Symbol of her strength. Symbol. It's a strange looking word, but I think there's just two sounds. Symbol. Symbol. 
the thing that represents or stands for something else, often conveying a deeper meaning or significance. An example sentence could be, the dove is often seen as a symbol of peace. In the story, it was she got ready, wearing her favorite suit, a symbol of her strength. Strength is a hard word for most people to pronounce. So I break it down into kind of three sounds here. St, st, rang. There's no word rang. And then th, like th, thing, thing. So strength. Th, feel your tongue. Strength. It means the quality or state of being strong, the ability to withstand or exert force, pressure, or stress. An example sentence could be, Alice's strength was evident in her ability to adapt to new challenges. In the story, it was used as, she got ready, wearing her favorite suit, a symbol of her strength. Mirror. Now, this is a strange word to pronounce, so I break it down in Grant's crazy pronunciation guide to mirror, just mirror, and then her, mirror, mirror, mirror. <laughs> it means a reflective surface, typically glass, that shows a clear image of whatever is in front of it. An example sentence could be, he checked his appearance in the mirror before leaving for the meeting. The story, it was used as, she looked at herself in the mirror, took a deep breath, and said, You can do this, Maya. There's another difficult word to pronounce for most. Breath. So I look at this as kind of two sounds. Breh. There's no word breh. But breh. And then, again, the same. Like you have a leak. Breath. Breath. The air taken or expelled from the lungs during breathing. An example sentence could be, taking deep breaths can help reduce stress and anxiety. In the story, it was, she looked at herself in the mirror, took a deep breath and said, you can do this, Maya. Again, as a reminder, I really want you to speak with me and do some shadow English speaking practice. As I go through these, I want you to say them. Say them with me so that you're saying words like mirror, breath, and strength. These are difficult words. I want you to say these. I want you to say the sentences out loud. I want you to just say everything I say. I want you to say it out loud. Yeah, it's going to be hard. Build your confidence. So, reception. I pronounce it as three sounds. Re -sep -tion. Reception. 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 The area where visitors or guests are received and greeted, especially in a business or office setting. An example sentence could be, the receptionist warmly welcomed the guests as they arrived at the hotel. In the story, it was used as, she walked to the reception and gave her name. Show someone to somewhere. When you think about this, it might seem strange, but it's a very common thing to say in English. So go through this with me. It means to bring someone to a place and show them the direction to a place. An example sentence could be, she was very kind and showed me to the conference room where our meeting was going to take place. In the story, it was used as, welcome, Maya. Let me show you to your desk. To pick something up. It means to learn a new skill by practicing it and using it. It doesn't mean to pick up your pen or something. <laughs> it means to learn a new skill. So this is very different for almost all of you, I'm sure. An example sentence would be, when you live in a country, you soon pick up the language. Maybe. <laughs> in the story, it was used as, don't worry about the language. You'll pick it up as you go. Pass. Pass means to move or go from one place or condition to another. An example sentence could be, the team members pass the ball to each other during the game to advance toward the opponent's goal. 
and the story was used, the days began to pass. I have worked hard. Disappear. I have three sounds in Grant's crazy pronunciation guide. Disappear. 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 To vanish or go away suddenly or gradually. Becoming invisible or no longer present. An example sentence could be, The magician made the rabbit disappear from the hat with a wave of his wand. In the story, it was Maya felt her face become hot. She wanted to disappear. Colleagues. I have two sounds here in my crazy pronunciation guide. Call and eags. Eags is not a word, but that's the sound. Colleagues. A person who works with others in the same organization or profession. An example sentence could be, Maya's colleague, John, helped her understand the nuances of the language and supported her during meetings. In the story, it was used as, but then something nice happened. A colleague named John said, oh, you meant budget, not baguette, right? Budget, pronunciation, budge, budge, et, budget. It means, a plan for managing money over a specific period, outlining expected income and expenses. An example sentence could be, the company's budget for the upcoming year included allocations for marketing, research, and development. In the story, it was used as, but then something nice happened. A colleague named John said, oh, you mean budget, not baguette, right? Baguette. My crazy pronunciation way, I've got two sounds, bay and get. Baguette. Baguette. If you have a European accent, I'm sure you can come up with a more beautiful way of saying this, but this would be my American way of saying it. Baguette. Definition is a long, narrow loaf of French bread. I know you French fans of mine won't like my pronunciation. Too bad for you. An example sentence would be, Maya accidentally used the word baguette instead of budget in a meeting, causing confusion among her colleagues. In the story, it was used similar to that. Something nice happened. A colleague named John said, oh, you mean budget, not baguette, right? Measure. Me Zure. Zure. I couldn't come up with a great way to spell this, so I created Z-E-H-R. Zure. Zure. Sounds more like sure with a Z in front of it. Measure. A way of determining the quantity, extent, or degree of something. An example sentence could be, the company implemented various measures to improve employee satisfaction. In the story, it was used as, English is just a language. Not a measure of your intelligence, he said. Grateful. Really, the same pronunciation as great and then full. Grateful. It means feeling or showing appreciation for kindness or benefits received. An example sentence could be, the employees were grateful for the supportive work environment provided by their employer. In the story, it was used as, Maya felt grateful for John's kindness. Willingness. Really sounds just like it looks. Willingness. Willingness. It means being ready to do something or having a positive attitude towards doing something. An example sentence could be, the team's willingness to collaborate led to the successful co completion of the project. In the story, it was used as, Maya's willingness to learn helped her adapt to her new job environment. Big deal. Not hard to pronounce, big deal. But what does it really mean? It means something of a great importance or significance. An example sentence could be, securing the new client was a big deal for the company's growth prospects. In the story it was used as, one day, Maya was asked to lead a project. This was a big deal. Success. Success. 
I feel there's two sounds here. Suck, cess. Success. The definition is achievement of a desired outcome or goal. An example sentence could be, the launch of the new product was a great success, exceeding sales projections. In the story, it was used as, the project was a success. Proud. Words that have a U in them make everybody crazy, so let's change the U to a W. I won't help many of you. Lots of you hate W's also, but anyway. Proud. Proud, not proud, proud. The definition is feeling pleased or satisfied, especially with one's achievements, possessions, or people connected with oneself. An example could be the CEO is proud of the company's performance in the last fiscal year. In the story, it was used as Mr. Smith came to her and said, great job, Maya, we're proud of you. Lead, pronounced lead. It's the past tense of the verb lead, meaning to guide, direct, or be in charge of. An example sentence would be, the manager led the team through the project with confidence and clarity. In the story, it was used as, I led a project and it went well, she said. Hung up. (laughs) Hung up. It means to end a telephone call by replacing the receiver or pressing the button to disconnect. An example sentence would be, after discussing the details, they hung up and proceeded with their respective tasks. Hung up is the past tense of hang. To hang up is the present tense. And hung up, I hung up on the person yesterday. It's the past tense. In the story, it was used as Maya hung up the phone and looked out her window. Victories. I feel there's three sounds here. Victories. Victories means achievements or successes, especially in the face of challenges or obstacles. An example sentence could be, the team celebrated their victories after successfully launching the new product. In the story, it was used as she thought about her journey challenges, and the victories. Realized. I feel it's realized. 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 The definition is became aware of something or understood it clearly. An example sentence could be, after analyzing the data, they realized the importance of customer feedback for product improvement. In the story, it was used as she realized she had grown, not just as a professional, but as a person. Growing. Grow and then a bunch of ends. Growing. The definition is developed or increased in size, strength, or maturity. The past tense of grow, usually, or a different tense of grow. An example sentence could be, the company had grown significantly since its humble beginnings. In the story, it was used as, she realized that she had grown, not just as a professional, but as a person. Crossed a bridge. Crossed a bridge. Means overcame a significant challenge or transition from one state to another. An example could be, after overcoming her fear of public speaking, she felt like she had crossed a bridge in her personal development. In the story, it was used as, she had crossed a bridge from fear to confidence, from uncertainty to courage. Uncertainty. We've got four sounds here. Uncertainty. 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 Uncertainty means the state of being unsure or not having confidence in something. An example sentence could be, the uncertainty surrounding the economy made investors hesitant to make big decisions. In the story, it was used as, she had crossed a bridge from fear to confidence, from uncertainty to courage. Stepping into the unknown, stepping into the unknown. So I've got stepping into the, it's all fine, right? And then unknown, unknown, unknown. 
It means taking action or making decisions without knowing what will happen next, facing new situations or challenges. An example sentence could be starting her own business was like stepping into the unknown for Sarah, but she was determined to succeed. In the story, it was used as Maya's story is a reminder that stepping into the unknown can be scary, but it's also where we grow. Fantastic. We finished the story. Again, now that we've gone through these words, especially if you're at the basic English level, please go back. Go back to the story. Read the story again. Now you know how to pronounce the words. You know how to use them in sentences. Now say this story. Feel this story. That's deep learning. Enjoy it. Next, we'll move on to climb the ladder of fluency to go from the basic level to the advanced level. In a distant land, there was a business professional named Maya. Exceptionally skilled in her field, Maya thrived on resolving complex problems, engaging in meaningful conversations, and crafting strategic plans. A new chapter unfolded in her career when she secured a position at a prominent U.S. corporation, a prospect that filled her with both exhilaration and trepidation. The opportunity represented a significant advancement in her career. Yet the challenge of operating entirely in English, a language she knew but wasn't native to her, loomed large. On the dawn of her inaugural day, Maya woke early, her emotions a tangle of apprehension and boldness. She likened her feelings to butterflies for the nerves, eagles, for the courage. Attired in her most empowering suit, symbolizing her inner strength, she stood before the mirror, inhaled deeply, and bolstered herself with the words, you have the strength to succeed, Maya. She entered the office to find a spacious, luminous environment, alive with activity. The swift face and focused demeanors of her colleagues initially left her feeling somewhat adrift. Yet recalling her mother's sage advice, one step at a time, Maya proceeded to introduce herself at reception. The receptionist greeted her warmly. Welcome, Maya. Allow me to escort you to your desk. Her workspace was inviting with a comforting view of a quaint park that eased her transition. Soon after, her supervisor, Mr. Smith, approached to introduce himself. His approach was amiable, and he spoke with deliberate clarity to accommodate her. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our team, Maya. The language barrier is temporary. Your learning and our support will see you through he assured. With a grateful smile, Maya replied, thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm eager to embrace this challenge and contribute to our team's success. As days turned into weeks, Maya diligently applied herself to her work, observing and mimicking her colleagues' linguistic styles. Despite her efforts, occasional errors were inevitable. In one memorable meeting, she mistakenly used an incorrect term, leading to a brief moment of confusion among her peers. The flush of embarrassment was immediate, but the atmosphere lightened when a colleague, John, humorously clarified, you meant budget, not baguette, correct? Prompting laughter all around, including from Maya. John proved to be an invaluable mentor to Maya, offering clarity on misunderstandings and sharing resources. He reminded her, proficiency in English is not an indicator of your intellect. Maya was deeply thankful for John's support and guidance. Over time, Maya's confidence in her language skills grew, as did her comfort with making and learning from mistakes. 
Her dedication and adaptability earned her the respect and camaraderie of her colleagues, making her feel truly integrated into the team fabric. Her growing expertise and self-assurance led her to being entrusted with leading a critical project. Despite initial nerves, she approached the task with zeal, working collaboratively with her team on planning, problem-solving, and client interactions. The project's success was a collective triumph, celebrated by the entire team. Mr. Smith commended her. Outstanding effort, Maya. Your leadership has been instrumental to our success. That evening, Maya shared her achievements with her mother, her voice filled with pride and accomplishment. Mom, I've led a project to success. It was well received, she conveyed. Her mother's response was warm and filled with pride. I've always known you possess the strength and determination to achieve great things, Maya. After ending the call, Maya reflected on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, staring into the starlit sky. The experiences had molded her, facilitating a transition from apprehension to confidence, from uncertainty to assertiveness. Maya's journey underscores the transformative power of embracing challenges, highlights the essence, perseverance, the instructive nature of errors, and the significance of supportive relationships. Above all, it reaffirms that our true value is not measured by linguistic perfection, but by the courage to express ourselves and forge connections across linguistic divides. Ah, I get lots of comments. Is it real or AI? Let me tell you, 100% it's real. <laughs> okay, as I said early on, one of the things that can work really well here is if you take a paragraph from the first story, then when you're comfortable with all the vocabulary and the pronunciation, then take a paragraph from the second story. That paragraph is going to be a lot harder. In that second story, then go through the vocabulary with me as I go through the vocabulary next and really become comfortable with everything in my deep learning process. Be comfortable with the pronunciation. Be comfortable with the definition, the example sentence. Be comfortable saying it out loud with me, practicing your shadowing, speaking with me, and just get really comfortable with it. And when you're there, then compare these paragraphs. Paragraph from the first story, paragraph from the second story. Then you really start to feel that, oh, this is the same story, just some more difficult words. But I know 100% you can get comfortable with all of these great words, terms, and phrases. That's what I suggest you do. Join me as I go on for a long time going through all these definitions and pronunciations and example sentences. So please take the time, join me. Really, I want you to speak out loud, shadow me. Use your English shadowing method here and speak with me. It, this doesn't happen unless you get comfortable saying all of this. Take your time, make sure your family isn't around and go through this with me speak out loud. The more you speak out loud, the more confident you will become faster. Okay, please join me. Let's go through this very long list of vocabulary from story two. Distant land. Distant. It means a far away or remote area, often with unfamiliar customs or surroundings. An example sentence could be, the company's expansion strategy involved venturing into distant lands to explore emerging markets. In the story, it was used as, in a distant land, there was a business professional named Maya. Exceptionally, 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 exceptionally. 
now with some confidence, exceptionally. It means unusually outstanding or remarkable in a, in a particular quality or skill. The example sentence would be, the candidate's exceptionally strong communication skills impressed the hiring manager during the interview. In the story, it was used as exceptionally skilled in her field, Maya thrived on resolving complex problems, engaging in meaningful conversations, and crafting strategic plans. Thrived. I think of it as making that TH sound, which many of you hate, and then rived. Rived's not a word, but I made it into a word. Thrived. It means to flourish or prosper, especially in a challenging or competitive environment. An example sentence would be, despite the economic downturn, the small business thrived due to its innovative products and excellent customer service. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Exceptionally skilled in her field, Maya thrived on resolving complex problems, engaging in meaningful conversations, and crafting strategic plans. Resolving. I think of it this way. Resolving. 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 It means solving or finding solutions to problems or issues. An example sentence could be, the IT department played a crucial role in resolving the network outage ensuring minimal disruption to business operations. In the story, it was used as exceptionally skilled in her field, Maya thrived on resolving complex problems, engaging in meaningful conversations, and crafting strategic plans. Engaging. I think of it as four sounds. N-G-A-G-I-N. Engaging. The last sound is really together, but I don't know how to spell jing. <laughs> so I made it four different sounds. Engaging, engaging, engaging. It means actively participating in or initiating meaningful interactions or discussions. An example sentence could be, the sales team focuses on engaging potential clients through personalized communication and tailored solutions. In the story, it was used as, Maya thrived on resolving complex problems, engaging in meaningful conversations, and crafting strategic plans. Meaningful, meaningful, meaningful. I really like this word. It means significant, purposeful, having importance or depth. An example sentence could be, the company encourages employees to Seek meaningful experiences, both inside and outside of work, to foster personal growth and fulfillment. In the story, it was used as, Maya thrived on resolving complex problems, engaging in meaningful conversations, and crafting strategic plans. Crafting strategic. These words don't have to go together, but I'm going to put them together here. Crafting strategic, strategic, crafting strategic. It means creating or developing plans or actions that are carefully designed to achieve long-term goals or advantages. An example sentence could be, the marketing team spent months crafting strategic campaigns to target specific customer segments and increase brand awareness. In the story, it was used again in this sentence. Maya thrived on resolving complex problems, engaging in meaningful conversations, and crafting strategic plans. Unfolded. Another really good word. Unfolded. Unfolded. To develop or progress gradually, often revealing new aspects or opportunities. An example sentence could be, As the project unfolded, it became clear that additional resources would be needed to meet the deadline. In the story, it was used in this sentence. A new chapter unfolded in her career when she secured a position at a prominent U.S. corporation, 
a prospect that filled her with both exhilaration and trepidation. <laughs> Have fun with those. Secured. Secured. <laughs> Put that D on the end there. Secured. Secured. It means obtained or acquired something, often through effort or negotiation, to ensure its possession or achievement. An example sentence could be, the company secured a lucrative contract with a major client, significantly boosting its revenue. In the story, it was used as a new chapter unfolded in her career when she secured a position at a prominent U.S. corporation, a prospect that filled her with both exhilaration and trepidation. Prominent. Prom-i-nent. I don't know how to spell i, so I'm going to spell it I-H throughout all of these. So it's prominent. 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 It means well-known, important, or widely recognized, often due to significance or influence. An example would be, the company's CEO is a prominent figure in the industry, frequently featured in business magazines and conferences. In the story, it was used as a new chapter unfolded in her career when she secured a position at a prominent U.S. corporation, a prospect that filled her with both exhilaration and trepidation. Prospect. I think of it as prospect. Prospect. Not prospect. Prospect. It means a possibility or likelihood of future success often in terms of a potential opportunity or outcome. An example sentence could be, the new product launch presents an exciting prospect for increased market share and profitability. In the story, it was used as when she secured a position at a prominent U.S. corporation, a prospect that filled her with both exhilaration and trepidation. Here are the words you've been looking forward to, exhilaration. (laughs) Exhilaration. 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 I don't really feel an H in there. You might find some pronunciation guide, some academic guide that puts an H in there. I don't feel it. Exhilaration. Exhilaration. It means the feeling of intense excitement, happiness, or elation. An example sentence would be, the team celebrated with exhilaration after winning the prestigious industry award. In the story, it was used again in the sentence, when she secured a position in a prominent U.S. corporation, a prospect that filled her with both exhilaration and trepidation. Now, you can't say exhilaration like a robot. This had a lot of exhilaration. You have to add some feeling to it when you say it with me. Exhilaration. Be enthused. Be excited about it. Otherwise, the word means nothing and you have no communication. Okay, here's your other word. Trepidation. Trap. I. De. Shun. Trepidation. Trepidation. It means a feeling of fear or anxiety about something that may happen. An example would be, she approached the stage with trepidation, nervous about speaking in front of such a large audience. In the story, again, as part of this sentence, a prospect that filled her with both exhilaration and trepidation. Significant. <laughs> Probably my favorite word. I use it all the time. You see meaningful in the definition here. Significant. Significant means important or meaningful, often having a notable impact or consequence. An example sentence could be, the new marketing campaign resulted in a significant increase in sales for the company. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The opportunity represented a significant advancement in her career, yet the challenge of operating entirely in English, a language she knew 
but wasn't native to it, loomed large. Entirely, and tire, Lee, entirely, entirely, it means completely or wholly, without any exception or part left out. An example sentence would be, the project was completed entirely by the deadline, showcasing the team's dedication and efficiency. In the story, it was part of this sentence, the challenge of operating entirely in English, a language she knew but wasn't native to her, loomed large. Loomed large. <laughs> I think of like this big black cloud that hangs over you and everything is going bad day after day. Loomed large to appear threatening or imposing, often in a way that creates worry or concern. The deadline for the project loomed large, causing the team to work overtime to meet it. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. Language she knew, but wasn't native to her, loomed large, creating a lot of worry. Dawn. I don't know how to spell this from a pronunciation standpoint. So I went da, and then a bunch of N's at the end. Dawn. It means the early hours of the morning, specifically the time when daylight first begins to appear. An example sentence would be, the team gathered at dawn to prepare for the important presentation scheduled for later that day. In the story, it was used as, on the dawn of her inaugural day, Maya awoke early, her emotions a tangle of apprehension and boldness. Inaugural. In. Og. You. Raw. Inaugural, inaugural, with confidence, inaugural. It means marking the beginning or initiation of something, especially an event or period of time, the first time. The company's inaugural product launch attracted a lot of attention from industry experts and consumers alike. The story, it was used this way. On the dawn of her inaugural day, Maya awoke early, her emotions a tangle of apprehension and boldness. Awoke, ah, woke, awoke. It means to wake up from sleep, often referring to the moment when one becomes conscious after sleeping. An example sentence would be, she awoke to the sound of birds chirping outside her window signaling the start of a new day. In the story, it was used as, on the dawn of her inaugural day, Maya awoke early, her emotions a tangle of apprehension and boldness. Tangle, tang, go, tangle. To become twisted or knotted together, often creating a confused or complicated situation. Example sentence would be, the wires behind the computer desk were tangled, making it difficult to identify which one belonged to which device. Sounds exactly like my desk. <laughs> In the story, it was used as, on the dawn of her inaugural day, Maya awoke early, her emotions a tangle of apprehension and boldness. Apprehension. App. Re-hen-shun, apprehension. Apprehension means anxiety or fear that something unpleasant or dangerous may happen. An example sentence could be, she felt a sense of apprehension before the job interview, unsure of how it would go. In the story, it was used again in this sentence. On the dawn of her inaugural day, Maya awoke early. Her emotions a tangle of apprehension and boldness. 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 The definition means courageous. Courageous. Or fearless behavior. Willingness to take risks or face challenges. An example sentence would be, His boldness in confronting the issue head-on impressed his colleagues and earned their respect. 
in the story, it was used as on the dawn of her inaugural day, Maya awoke early. Her emotions, a tangle of apprehension and boldness. Likened. That's a hard word for people to pronounce. So let's just look at it this way. Like and then end. Like and like and. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> it doesn't look right, but that's how you pronounce it. Likened. It means to compare or draw a parallel between two things, often to illustrate a similarity. An example sentence could be, she likened the company's growth to a seed blossoming into a mighty tree, symbolizing progress and strength. Wow, what a sentence. In the story, it was used in this sentence. She likened her feelings to butterflies for the nerves, eagles for the courage. A tired, a tired, a tired. That's it. Ah, tired, attired, means dressed or clothed in a particular manner, often referring to being dressed formally or appropriately for an occasion. An example sentence could be, the guests were attired in elegant evening gowns and tuxedos for the gala event. In the story, it was used in this sentence, attired in her most empowering suit, symbolizing her inner strength. She stood before the mirror, inhaled deeply, and bolstered herself with the words, You have the strength to succeed, Maya. Empowering suit. It means a garment, <laughs> like a suit. Typically a suit that imbues. There's a word for you to look up. That imbues the wearer with a sense of strength, confidence, or empowerment. An example sentence could be, she wore her empowering suit to the important meeting, knowing that it would help her convey authority and professionalism. In the story, again, it was in this big sentence, attired in her most empowering suit, symbolizing her inner strength, she stood before the mirror, inhaled deeply, and bolstered herself with the words, you have the strength to succeed, Maya. Symbolizing. Sim, bull, eyes, in. <laughs> Doesn't look like that, but that's how it sounds. Symbolizing. Symbolizing. It means representing or serving as a symbol of something else, often conveying deeper meaning or significance. An example sentence would be The dove is often used as a symbol of peace and tranquility. Another good word. In various cultures. In the story, it was used, attired in her most empowering suit, symbolizing her inner strength. Inner strength. Strength is a really hard word for everybody to pronounce, so give the ST sound and then some word called rang. There's no word rang. And then a bunch of TH at the end. Strength. Strength. Strength, like strength, give it to me with confidence. It means mental or emotional resilience and fortitude. The ability to persevere and overcome challenges from within oneself. An example sentence would be, despite facing numerous setbacks, she relied on her inner strength to keep pushing forward toward her goals. In the story, it was used this way, attired in her most empowering suit, symbolizing her inner strength. Inhaled. Means to, or to exhale. Inhaled, inhaled, inhaled. To breathe in air or another substance, often deeply, usually through the nose. An example sentence would be, she inhaled the aroma of freshly brewed coffee, feeling its comforting warmth spread through her body. In the story, it was used as, she stood before the mirror, inhaled deeply, and bolstered herself with the words, you have the inner strength to succeed, Maya. Bolstered. I think about it this way, bowl, and then stir, and then... Put a D on the end. Bolstered. 
Uh, it means to strengthen. Say that with me. Strengthen. Support or reinforce something, often with the intention of making it more resilient or robust. The company bolstered its cybersecurity measures to protect against potential cyber attacks. In the story, it was used in this sentence and bolstered herself with the words, you have the strength to succeed, Maya. Spacious, 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 spacious. It means having a large amount of space, roomy or ample in size. An example sentence would be, the new office layout was designed to be spacious, providing employees with plenty of room to work comfortably. In the story, it was used this way. She entered the office to find a spacious, luminous environment, alive with activity. Luminous. Loom in us. That's it. Luminous. Luminous means emitting. There's another word for you. Emitting or reflecting light, brightly illuminated or glowing. Lots of light. An example sentence would be the chandelier. Look that one up. The chandelier cast a luminous glow throughout the room, creating an elegant atmosphere. In the story, it was used, she entered the office to find a spacious, luminous environment, alive with activity. A swift pace. I'm sure all of you know Taylor Swift, so swift pace. Pace. It means a fast or rapid rate of movement or progress. An example would be, the team worked at a swift pace to meet the tight deadline for the project. In the story, it was used, the swift pace and focused demeanors of her colleagues initially left her feeling somewhat adrift. Demeanors. Da mean ors. Demeanors. Demeanors. It means the outward behavior or conduct of a person, often reflecting their attitude or mood. An example sentence could be, despite the stressful situation, her calm and composed demeanor reassured the team members. In the story, it was used this way. The swift pace and focused demeanors of her colleagues initially left her feeling somewhat adrift. Initially, in ish Ali. Ali, initially, initially. It means at first or in the beginning of a process or situation. An example sentence could be, initially, she found the new software confusing, but after some practice, she became proficient in using it. In the story, it was used this way, the swift pace and focused demeanors of her colleagues initially left her feeling somewhat adrift. Adrift. Ah, drift. Adrift. Adrift means drifting aimlessly or without direction, often feeling lost or uncertain. An example sentence could be, after the company restructured, many employees felt adrift, unsure of their roles and responsibilities. In the story, it was used in this sentence, the swift pace and focused demeanors of her colleagues initially left her feeling somewhat adrift. Sage. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure how to spell this, so in my crazy pronunciation guide, so say and then ja, sage, sage, means wise, judicious, look that up, or possessing deep understanding and good judgment. An example sentence could be, the CEO's advice, rooted in years of experience, was often regarded as sage counsel by the executive team. In the story, it was used this way, yet recalling her mother's sage advice, one step at a time, Maya proceeded to introduce herself at reception. Proceeded. It means to continue or move forward, especially after reaching a certain point or following a plan or course of action. An example sentence could be, after gathering all the necessary documents, she proceeded to submit her application for the job. 
In the story, it was used like this. Yet, recalling her mother's sage advice, one step at a time, Maya proceeded to introduce herself at reception. Escort. S. Court. Escort. It means to accompany or guide someone, often to ensure their safety or provide assistance. An example sentence could be, the security guard escorted the VIP guests to their seats at the event. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The receptionist greeted her warmly. Welcome, Maya. Allow me to escort you to your desk. Inviting. 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 It means appealing or attractive, creating a pleasant or welcoming atmosphere. An example sentence could be the cozy fireplace and comfortable furniture made the living room feel inviting on a cold winter evening. In the story, it was used like this. Her workspace was inviting with a comforting view of a quaint park that eased her transition. Comforting. This is not comforting. I laugh because I have some great clients that always want to call this comforting, but it's comforting, comforting, comforting. It's comforting. It means providing a sense of reassurance, peace, or relief from distress. The sound of rain tapping on the roof was comforting, lulling her into a peaceful sleep. Lulling is a great word. Look, look it up. In the story, it was used, her workplace was inviting with a comforting view of a quaint park that eased her transition. Quaint. Well, it's just like paint. <laughs> Same pronunciation, put a Q in it. Quaint. It means attractively unusual or old-fashioned, often with a charm or appeal due to its simplicity or antiquity. The example sentence might be, they stayed in a quaint bed and breakfast in the countryside, complete with vintage decor and homemade breakfasts. Sounds lovely. In the story, it was used this way. Her workplace was inviting, with a comforting view of a quaint park that eased her transition. Eased. That's <laughs> just making the sound E, and then the sound S, and then a D. Eased. Eased. It means to make something less severe, intense, or difficult, to provide relief or comfort. Again, comfort. An example sentence would be, the pain medication eased her discomfort after the surgery. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Her workspace was inviting, with a comforting view of a quaint park that eased her transition. 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 The process or period of changing from one state, condition, or activity to another. An example sentence could be, the company underwent a transition to remote work, adapting its policies and procedures accordingly. In the story, it was used this way. Her workspace was inviting, with a comforting view of a quaint park that eased her transition. Soon after, it's just an interesting phrase to use that you probably don't use when you're speaking. So make this part of your vocabulary, please. It means a short time after a particular event or moment. It means just what you think it means, but nobody that I listen to ever says this as a non-native speaker. So an example sentence would be, soon after finishing her meal, she started to feel drowsy. It means sleepy. In the story, it was used as soon after her supervisor, Mr. Smith, approached to introduce himself. Supervisor. 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 It means a person who oversees or manages the work of others, often in a professional or organizational setting. An example sentence could be, the supervisor is responsible for assigning tasks and providing guidance to the team members. In the story, it was used like this. Soon after, her supervisor, Mr. Smith, approached to introduce himself. 
approached. Let's take a look at this. Approached. 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 I find many words that end in ed, they really sound like a T at the end for me. I know that's not professional English teacher stuff, but I feel a T at the end of many words that end in ed. So you'll see this a lot for me. Approached. It means to come near or closer to someone or something, often with the intention of initiating contact or interaction. An example sentence could be, he approached the podium to deliver his speech to the audience. In the story, it was used like this. Soon after, her supervisor, Mr. Smith, approached to introduce himself. Amiable. That's a really good word. Amiable. 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 It means, say it with confidence, amiable. It means... Friendly, pleasant, or having a likable demeanor. An example sentence could be, despite the stressful situation, he remained amiable and approachable to his colleagues. In the story, it was used in this sentence. His approach was amiable, and he spoke with deliberate clarity to accommodate her. Deliberate clarity. Da, lib, er, it. Not eight. It's not deliberate. That's another word um, where they deliberated in court. But in this case, it's deliberate, and it ends in it. doesn't look like it, but that's how it ends. Clarity. So once again, deliberate clarity. Deliberate clarity. Deliberate clarity. It means clear and precise communication that is intentional and carefully thought out. He wanted to speak nicely, clearly, and slowly to Maya, so she understood. The instructor explained the complex concept with deliberate clarity, ensuring that all students understood. In the story, it was used this way. His approach was amiable, and he spoke with deliberate clarity to accommodate her. Accommodate. A com i date. Accommodate. Accommodate means to provide lodging, as a hotel would accommodate you, to provide lodging, support, or assistance to someone, often by adjusting to their needs or preferences. An example sentence is the hotel is able to accommodate the guest's request for a late checkout. In the story, it was used in this sentence. His approach was amiable, and he spoke with deliberate clarity to accommodate her. Barrier. Bear, e, er, barrier, barrier it means something that prevents movement, progress, or communication, often creating obstacles or challenges. An example sentence could be, language barriers can hinder effective communication between people who speak different languages. In the story, it was used this way. The language barrier is temporary. Your learning and our support We'll see you through, he assured. Temporary. I think of it this way. Temp or airy. Temporary. Temporary. Relax and let it come out. Temporary. It means lasting only a limited period of time. It's not permanent. An example could be the company hired temporary workers to help during the busy holiday season. In the story, it was used this way. The language barrier is temporary. Your learning and our support will see you through. See you through. Through is, sounds just like through. He threw the ball. See you through. It means to support or assist someone until the completion of a task or the resolution of a situation, often despite difficulties. An example sentence could be, his friends promised to see him through the challenging times ahead, offering their unwavering support. In the story, it was used this way. The language barrier is temporary. Your learning and our support will see you through, he assured. Assured. Ah, uh, sure, and then duh. <laughs> 
Assured. Assured. It means to give confidence or certainty to someone, to reassure or guarantee. An example sentence could be, the manager assured the team that their jobs were secure, despite the company's recent financial difficulties. In the story, it was used this way. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our team, Maya. The language barrier is temporary. Your learning and our support will see you through, he assured. Grateful. Same as grateful. Grateful. It means feeling or showing appreciation or thankfulness, often towards someone who has done something kind or helpful. An example could be, she was grateful to her colleagues for their support during her time of need. In the story, it was used this way. With a grateful smile, Maya replied, Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm eager to embrace this challenge and contribute to our team's success. Eager. 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 Eager means feeling enthusiastic or excited about something that is about to happen or be done. An example could be the students were eager to start their summer vacation after completing their final exams. In the story, it was used like this. With a grateful smile, Maya replied, Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm eager to embrace this challenge and contribute to our team's success. Embrace. M, bray, and then s- embrace, <laughs> embrace. To accept or welcome something eagerly and enthusiastically. The example sentence could be, the company decided to embrace new technology, to stay competitive in the market. In the story, it was used in this sentence. With a grateful smile, Maya replied, thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm eager to embrace this challenge and contribute to our team's success. Contribute. Again, I have a lot of people that want to call this contribute. But please, it's contribute. Just contribute. Contribute. It means to give or provide something, often in terms of effort, resources, or ideas to help achieve a common goal or purpose. An example sentence could be, each team member contributed their unique skills to the project, resulting in its success. In the story, it was used this way. With a grateful smile, Maya replied, thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm eager to embrace this challenge and contribute to our team's success. Days turned into weeks. There's nothing hard about any of these words, but it's the phrase that would be really nice to put into your vocabulary. It just means time went on for a little bit longer than what you thought. It means a period of time passing, indicating the progression from shorter to longer durations. An example sentence could be, what started as a weekend getaway turned into a month-long vacation as days turned into weeks. In the story, it was used as days turned into weeks. Maya diligently applied herself to her work, observing and mimicking her colleagues' linguistic styles. Diligently applied herself. Dil, uh, gently, diligently, uh, applied, uh, <laughs> applied herself. Diligently applied herself. Diligently applied herself. Diligently applied herself. It means to work hard and conscientiously. One more time. Conscientiously. Say it with me. Conscientiously. Putting forth effort and focus into one's tasks or responsibilities. An example would be, despite the challenges, she diligently applied herself to mastering the new software. In the story, it was used like this. As days turned into weeks, Maya diligently applied herself to her work, observing and mimicking her colleagues' linguistic styles. Okay, I have a challenge for you. If you got this far into this long video, I want you to type 
conscientiously into the comments. <laughs> Everybody else will be wondering what is going on. Just type conscientiously. Nothing else. Conscientiously. Let's see how many of you will type conscientiously. <laughs> and if you got this far, congratulations. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Observing, 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 put it together, observing, means to watch carefully or attentively, often to gain information or understanding of a situation or behavior. An example sentence could be, the detective spent hours observing the suspect's movements before making an arrest. In the story, it was much nicer than that. As days turned into weeks, Maya diligently applied herself to her work, observing and mimicking her colleagues' linguistic styles. Mimicking. Mim, ik, in. Mimicking. Mimicking means to imitate or copy the actions, mannerisms, or speech of someone or something, often for the purpose of learning or fitting in. I want you to mimic me. Can mimic all my hand gestures. An example, the comedian was skilled at mimicking famous personalities, much to the amusement of his audience. In the story, it was used like this. As days turned into weeks, Maya diligently applied herself to her work, observing and mimicking her colleagues' linguistic styles. <laughs> linguistic styles. I think you know what this means, but Pronunciation is always difficult. So let's go linguis. No word guis, but that's the best I could come up with. So I just type G W I S S guis, like Swiss, but with a G. Guis. Linguistic styles. Linguistic styles. The distinctive ways in which individuals or groups use language, including vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and tone to express themselves. An example sentence could be, different regions have unique linguistic styles, which can sometimes lead to misunderstandings between speakers from different areas. In the story, it was used like this. As days turned into weeks, Maya diligently applied herself to her work, observing and mimicking her colleagues' linguistic styles. Occasional. <laughs> I laugh because of the way I spelled this in my crazy pronunciation guy, but go through it with me. O and then K, shun, al. Occasional. Occasional. Much easier. It means happening from time to time. Occurring. Not occurring. Occurring. Occurring infrequently or irregularly. It means, despite occasional setbacks, the project progressed steadily towards completion. In the story, it was used this way. Despite her efforts, occasional errors were inevitable. Inevitable is a great word. Let's break it down. In, ev, e, ta, bell. Inevitable. Inevitable. It's inevitable. Certain to happen. Unavoidable. Or bound to occur. An example sentence would be, with the increase in population, Traffic congestion in the city became inevitable. Look up congestion. Good word. In the story, it was used despite her efforts. Occasional errors were inevitable. Memorable. Mem or abo. Memorable. Memorable. It means worthy of being remembered or easily recalled. Often due to being significant, remarkable, or emotionally impactful. An example could be, the trip to Paris was a memorable experience, filled with unforgettable moments. In the story, it was used as, in one memorable meeting, she mistakenly used an incorrect term, leading to a brief moment of confusion among her peers. Brief. It's like beef with a R in it. Brief. It means lasting for only a short period of time, not prolonged or extensive. An example sentence could be, he gave a brief overview of the project during the meeting. In the story, 
it was written as, in one memorable meeting, she mistakenly used an incorrect term, leading to a brief moment of confusion among her peers. Among, ah, among, 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 it means surrounded by or in the midst of a group of people or things. An example sentence could be, she felt a sense of belonging among her colleagues. In the story, it was written as, in one memorable meeting, she mistakenly used an incorrect term, leading to a brief moment of confusion among her peers. Peers, that's how it's pronounced. Peers, it means individuals who are equal in age, status, or ability often belonging to the same social group or sharing similar characteristics or experiences. An example sentence could be, she discussed the project with her peers to gather different perspectives. In the story, it was used in this sentence. In one memorable meeting, she mistakenly used an incorrect term, leading to a brief moment of confusion among her peers. Flush of embarrassment. <laughs> Her face turned red. Flush of embarrassment. Embarrassment. Doesn't have to be a bad word. Embarrassment. It means a sudden and intense feeling of embarrassment or shame, often resulting in reddening of the face or body. An example sentence could be, she felt a flush of embarrassment when she realized she had mispronounced the client's name during the presentation. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The flush of embarrassment was immediate, but the atmosphere lightened when a colleague, John, humorously clarified. Atmosphere lightened. at mas fear and again, light and atmosphere lightened. Atmosphere lightened. The atmosphere lightened. It means to become less serious or tense, to improve in mood or atmosphere. An example sentence could be, after the team resolved the conflict, the atmosphere lightened and everyone began to relax. <laughs> in the story, it was used this way. The flush of embarrassment was immediate, but the atmosphere lightened when a colleague, John, humorously clarified, humorously clarified, it means he used a funny way, he was funny when he made this clear, humorously, humorously, clarified, humorously Clarified, humorously clarified, to explain or resolve something in a lighthearted or amusing manner, often to alleviate tension or awkwardness. There, repeat that sentence with me. An example sentence could be, he humorously clarified the misunderstanding, causing everyone to laugh and relax. In the sentence in the story, it was, the flush of embarrassment was immediate. But the atmosphere lightened when a colleague, John, humorously clarified, you meant budget, not baguette, correct? Prompting laughter all around, including from Maya. Prompting laughter all around. It made everybody laugh. <laughs> Prompt, teen, prompting. Laughter is a crazy looking word, but I think of it as L-A-F-F. -F. Laugh, laughter, laughter all around. Prompting laughter all around. Causing laughter or amusement from everyone present in a particular setting or situation. Example sentence could be, his witty joke prompted laughter all around the dinner table. In the story, it was used as part of the sentence. When a colleague, John, humorously clarified, you meant budget, not baguette, correct? Prompting laughter all around, including from Maya. 
invaluable. That's a great word. Invaluable. 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 It means extremely useful. Indispensable. Look up that word. Or of great value. Often beyond calculation. An example sentence could be the mentor's guidance and advice proved to be invaluable to the new employees. In the story, it was used this way. John proved to be an invaluable mentor to Maya, offering clarity on misunderstandings and sharing resources. Mentor. Mentor. It means an experienced and trusted advisor or guide, often providing support, advice, and encouragement to someone with less experience. An example sentence could be, she sought out a mentor in the industry to help her navigate the complexities of her new job. Great sentence. In the story, it was used, John proved to be an invaluable mentor to Maya, offering clarity on misunderstandings and sharing resources. Misunderstandings. 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 It means situations where there's a failure to correctly understand or interpret someone's intentions, words, or actions. An example sentence could be, clear communication is essential to avoid misunderstandings in the workplace. In the story, it was used in the sentence, John proved to be an invaluable mentor to Maya, offering clarity on misunderstandings and sharing resources. Resources. Re Sources. Resources. It means materials, funds, personnel, or other assets that can be used to accomplish a task or achieve a goal. An example sentence could be, the company invested in additional resources to support the expansion of its operations overseas. In the story, again, it was used in this sentence. John proved to be an invaluable mentor to Maya, offering clarity on misunderstandings and sharing resources. Reminded. I look at it this way. Reminded. 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 It means to cause someone to remember something or bring their attention back to a particular subject or idea. An example sentence could be, she reminded him of the upcoming deadline for the project proposal. In the story, it was used this way. He reminded her, proficiency in English is not an indicator of your intellect. Proficiency. Pro, fish, and C. Proficiency. Proficiency. The skill or ability to do something well, usually gained through experience or training. And this, an example sentence could be, her proficiency in coding languages made her a valuable asset to the software development team. In the story, it was used this way. He reminded her, proficiency in English is not an indicator of your intellect. Indicator. In-da-ca-tor. Indicator. Indicator. Something that provides information or signals about the state or condition of something else. Often used as a measure or sign of a particular quality or attribute. An example sentence could be, stock prices can be an indicator of the overall health of the economy. In the story, it was used this way. He reminded her, proficiency in English is not an indicator of your intellect. 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 The ability to think, reason, and understand complex ideas often considered as a measure of a person's intelligence or mental capacity. An example sentence could be, his keen intellect allowed him to grasp difficult concepts quickly. In the story, it was used this way. He reminded her, proficiency in English is not an indicator of your intellect. Guidance. Guy. Dance. <laughs> Guidance. It means advice or information provided to help someone make decisions or navigate a situation. An example sentence could be, she sought the guidance of her mentor 
when faced with a difficult career choice. In the story, it was used as part of the sentence. Maya was deeply thankful for John's support and guidance. Over time. A nice way to use this, different than overtime, which means you work more than you're supposed to, but it just means a nice way to talk about the passing of time. It means as time passes or progresses, gradually. An example sentence could be, over time, his health improved with regular exercise and a balanced diet. In the story, it was used as, over time, Maya's confidence in her language skills grew as did her comfort with making and learning from mistakes. Dedication. dead i k shun Dedication. Dedication means the quality of being committed to a task or purpose, often involving persistent effort and determination. An example sentence could be, her dedication to her studies paid off when she graduated with top honors story, it was used this way. Her dedication and adaptability earned her the respect and camaraderie of her colleagues, making her feel truly integrated into the team fabric. Adaptability earned her the respect. This is not a normal phrase, but I'm going to use this as a phrase for you. So let's go through this. Adaptability. Adaptability. Earned, uh, da, 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 earned her the respect. Respect. Adaptability earned her the respect. It means the ability to adjust or change to new conditions or circumstances, often showing flexibility and resourcefulness. An example sentence could be his adaptability allowed him to thrive in different environments and situations. In the story, it was used this way. Her dedication and adaptability earned her the respect and camaraderie of her colleagues, making her feel truly integrated into the team fabric. Camaraderie. It's like the word calm. Camaraderie. 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 It means the spirit of friendship, mutual trust, and goodwill among members of a group example sentence could be, the team's camaraderie was evident in their willingness to help each other out during busy periods. Her dedication and adaptability earned her the respect and camaraderie of her colleagues, making her feel truly integrated into the team fabric. Truly integrated. Truly integrated. Truly integrated. Truly integrated, fully assimilated, there's a word for you to look up, or incorporated into a group or community, often to the extent that one feels a sense of belonging or unity with others. An example sentence could be, after years of living in the neighborhood, she felt truly integrated into the new local community. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Her dedication and adaptability earned her the respect and camaraderie of her colleagues, making her feel truly integrated into the team fabric. Team fabric. Team fabric. Team fabric. It means the overall structure, cohesion, another word for you to look up, and dynamic of a team, often characterized by its collective values, goals, and interpersonal relationships. An example sentence could be, the team fabric was strengthened by regular team building activities and open communication. In the story, it was used in this sentence, her dedication and adaptability earned her the respect and camaraderie of her colleagues, making her feel truly integrated into the team fabric. Expertise. I think of it as expertise. You will often hear this as expertise, and that's just fine. You can say it either way. Pond, pool. They're both good with me. Expertise. Um, it's up to you how you want to say it. You'll hear it both ways a lot. There's no wrong here. 
the definition means specialized knowledge, skill, or proficiency in a particular field or subject. An example sentence could be, her expertise in data analysis was crucial for solving complex problems in the project. In the story, it was used this way. Her growing expertise and self-assurance led her to be an entrusted, leading, and critical project. Self-assurance. self uh, sure, ants. Self-assurance. Self-assurance. Confidence in oneself or one's ability. A sense of certainty and self-confidence. An example could be, despite the challenges, she tackled the presentation with self-assurance, knowing she had prepared thoroughly. Thoroughly. <laughs> Have fun with that. In the story, it was used as her growing expertise and self-assurance led her to being entrusted and leading a critical project. I want you to feel self-assurance going through all of these. Entrusted with, and trusted with, entrusted, entrusted with. It means given responsibility for something valuable or important, to be relied upon or assigned a task or duty. Example sentence could be, she was entrusted with managing the company's finances due to her exceptional skills and reliability. In the story, it was used this way. Her growing expertise and self-assurance led her to being entrusted with leading a critical project. Critical. 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 It means extremely important or crucial often having a significant impact on the outcome of a situation or the achievement of a goal. In the example sentence, it could be the project faced a critical deadline that required everyone's full attention and effort. In the story, it was used this way. Her growing expertise and self-assurance led her to being entrusted with leading a critical project. Just remember, critical has many meanings. This is only one. Zeal. Zeal. <laughs> That's a good word. Great energy, enthusiasm, or passion in pursuit of a cause or objective. An example sentence could be, she tackled her new role with zeal, eager to make a positive impact on the organization. In the story, it was used this way. Despite initial nerves, she approached the task with zeal, working collaboratively with her team and planning, problem solving, and client interactions. Collaboratively. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of sounds that I put in here. Collaboratively. 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 It means working together with others in a cooperative and coordinated manner to achieve a common goal or objective. Example could be the team members collaborated effectively to brainstorm ideas and solve problems. In the story, it was used like this. Despite initial nerves, she approached the task with zeal, working collaboratively with her team on planning, problem solving, and client interactions. 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 It means the ways in which individuals or groups communicate, engage, or work together with one another. An example could be positive interactions among team members contribute to a productive and harmonious work environment. Harmonious is a great word. <laughs> Look it up. In the story, it was used this way. Despite initial nerves, she approached the task with zeal working collaboratively with her team on planning, problem solving, and client interactions. Collective triumph. These words typically don't go together, but in this case, it fits really nicely. So collective, collective, triumph. <laughs> Try to get that F out of there. Triumph, triumph, collective triumph. It means a shared victory or success achieved by a group or team working together towards a common goal. An example sentence could be, the completion of the project was a collective triumph for the entire department, highlighting their teamwork and dedication. In the story, it was used this way. 
The project's success was a collective triumph celebrated by the entire team. Celebrated by cell a bray tid Celebrated. Celebrated by recognized or acknowledged with joy and festivities by a particular group or community. <laughs> the team's victory was celebrated by a company-wide party with food, music, and speeches. I hope the speeches were short. In the story, the sentence was like this. The project's success was a collaborative triumph celebrated by the entire team. Commended. Ka men did not commended but commended 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 it means to praise or express approval for someone's actions achievements or behavior an example sentence could be the manager commended the employee for the ex- for their exceptional performance on the project in the story it was used like this mr smith commended her outstanding effort maya your leadership has been instrumental to our success outstanding. Be careful. This word has many meanings. The definition is exceptionally good or impressive, standing out from others in a positive way. An example sentence could be her outstanding performance earned her a promotion within the company. In the story, it was used this way. Mr. Smith commended her. Outstanding effort, Maya. Your leadership has been instrumental to our success. Instrumental. 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 It's a good word. Playing a key role or having a significant impact on the outcome of a situation or the achievement of a goal. His guidance and expertise were instrumental in completing the project ahead of schedule. In the story, it was used like this. Mr. Smith commended her. Outstanding effort, Maya. Your leadership has been instrumental to our success. Pride. Pride. It means a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's achievements, qualities, or those of someone with whom one is closely associated. Derived is a good word. An example sentence could be, she felt a sense of pride in her daughter's academic achievements. In the story, it was used like this. That evening, Maya shared her achievements with her mother, her voice filled with pride and accomplishment. Accomplishment. A, com, plish. No word plish, I just made it up. Meant accomplishment. Accomplishment. Something that has been achieved successfully. A task or goal that has been completed with skill and effort. An example sentence could be, graduating from university was a significant accomplishment for him. In the story, it was used this way. That evening, Maya shared her achievements with her mother, her voice filled with pride and accomplishment. Oh, so nice. Well received. Well received. Accepted or appreciated by others in a positive manner, often with enthusiasm or approval. It's a nice word. An example would be her innovative ideas were well received by the team during the brainstorming session. In the story, the sentence was like this. Mom, I've led a project to success. It was well received, she conveyed. Conveyed is a great word for business English, especially. Convey and then just give a bunch of Ds. Conveyed. Conveyed, it means to communicate or express a message or information to someone else, often through words, gestures, or actions. You are trying to convey your message in English (laughs) and be self-assured that you're doing it confidently. She conveyed her gratitude to her colleagues for the support during her time of need. In the story, it was used like this. Mom. I've led a project to success. It was well received, she conveyed. Response. Response. There's no word sponsor, but that's the way I would look at it. Response. 
It means a reaction or a reply to something that has been said, done, or asked. An example sentence would be, her response to the proposal was positive, indicating her willingness to consider the idea further. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Her mother's response was warm and filled with pride. Warm. Warm has many meanings. I doubt you use it this way. It means kind, friendly, and affectionate in manner or atmosphere. An example would be, she received a warm welcome from her new colleagues on her first day at the office. In the story, it was used like this. Her mother's response was warm and filled with pride. Possessed. This is the way I feel this word. Possessed. I feel a T at the end, and I feel a T at the end with many of these words that end in ED. Go ahead, argue with me. I know the grammar police will, or the maybe the pronunciation police will come after me here, but I don't care. This is what I feel. You maybe should feel it too. Possessed. It means to own or have something, to have as a quality or characteristic. An example could be, he possessed a great deal of knowledge about the history of art. In the story, it was used this way. I've always known you possessed the strength and determination to achieve great things, Maya. Achieve. Ah, achieve. There's no word achieve, but that's the way I feel that it should be spelled. Achieve. To successfully reach or accomplish a desired goal, aim, or result through effort, skill, or perseverance. An example sentence would be, she worked hard to achieve her dream of becoming a doctor. In the story, it's used in this sentence. I've always known you possess the strength and determination to achieve great things, Maya. Reflected. Reflected. No word flecked, but reflected is the way I feel this pronunciation. To think deeply or carefully about something, to consider or contemplate. Really good word. An example sentence would be, she reflected on her past experiences and how they had shaped her. In the story, it's used this way. After ending the call, Maya reflected on her journey from the solitude of her apartment staring into the starlit sky. Solitude. Sol-i-tude. Solitude means the state or situation of being alone or isolated from others, the absence of companionship. As an example, it could be, he enjoyed the peaceful solitude of the mountains, away from the noise and bustle of the city. In the story, it was used in this sentence. After ending the call, Maya reflected on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, staring into the starlit sky. Staring into the starlit sky. <laughs> this is a good phrase, I guess. <laughs> it belongs together. Staring into the starlit sky. It means the sky is full of stars and you can't stop looking at it. Looking intently or fixedly at the sky, filled with stars. An example sentence could be, they spent the evening sitting on the beach, staring into the starlit sky and sharing their dreams. Oh, how romantic. In the story, it was used this way. Not quite as romantic. After ending the call, Maya reflected on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, staring into the starlit sky molded her mole did her molded molded her shaped or influenced her development character or outlook on life an example sentence could be her experiences traveling around the world molded her into a more open-minded and culturally aware person in the story it was used like this the experiences had molded her facilitating a transition from apprehension to confidence, from uncertainty to assertiveness. Facilitating, fa sil i te teen. Facilitating, 
Facilitating, it's a really good word, it means making something easier or possible, assisting in the achievement of a desired outcome. An example sentence could be, the new software system facilitated communication between departments, improving efficiency. In the story, it was used this way. The experiences had molded her, facilitating a transition from apprehension to confidence, from uncertainty to assertiveness. Transition. 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 It means the process or period of changing from one state, condition, or activity to another. An example sentence could be moving to a new city often involves a period of transition as one adjusts to the unfamiliar environment. In the story, it was used this way. The experiences had molded her, facilitating a transition from apprehension to confidence, from uncertainty to assertiveness. Uncertainty. Uncertainty. Uncertainty means the state of being unsure or not having confidence about something. Lack of certainty or confidence. I don't want you to have any uncertainty about English. An example would be there was uncertainty about whether the project would be completed on time due to unexpected delays. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The experiences had molded her facilitating a transition from apprehension to confidence, from uncertainty to assertiveness. 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 The quality of being confident and self-assured, often expressed in a firm and direct manner. Example could be, she demonstrated assertiveness by clearly stating her opinions and standing up for her rights in the workplace. In the story, it was used in this really good sentence. The experiences had molded her, facilitating a transition from apprehension to confidence, from uncertainty to assertiveness. Underscores. 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 Really good word. It means emphasizes or highlights the importance or significance of something. An example sentence would be, his success underscores the importance of hard work and dedication. In the story, it was used as, Maya's journey underscores the transformative power of embracing challenges. Transformative power. Transform-a-tive. Transformative power. It means the ability to bring about significant and positive changes in a person or situation. An example sentence could be, the transformative power of education can uplift entire communities out of poverty. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Maya's journey underscores the transformative power of embracing challenges. Embracing, M, Ray, Sing, embracing. I like this one. Embracing. It means to accept or welcome something enthusiastically or eagerly. An example could be she embraced the opportunity to learn a new skill. In the story, it was used like this. Maya's journey underscores the transformative power of embracing challenges. Highlights. 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 It means draws attention to or emphasizes the most important or significant aspects of something. An example sentence could be, the report highlights the key findings of the research study. In the story, it was used this way. It highlights the essence of perseverance, the instructive nature of errors, and the significance of supportive relationships. Essence. I just feel like a bunch of S's at the beginning, then sense. <laughs> essence. Essence. Means the intrinsic nature or indispensable quality. Look up those words. They're great words. Of something. The most important or fundamental aspect. An example could be the essence of good leadership is the ability to inspire and motivate others. In the story, it was used in this sentence. It highlights the essence of perseverance. 
the instructive nature of errors, and the significance of supportive relationships. Perseverance, 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 fantastic word. It means persistence in the face of difficulties or obstacles, the quality of continuing to work towards a goal despite challenges or setbacks. An example could be his perseverance enabled him to overcome numerous obstacles and eventually achieve success. In the sentence, it was, sorry, in the story, it was used this way. It highlights the essence of perseverance, the instructive nature of errors, and the significance of supportive relationships. Instructive nature. Instructive Nature. <laughs> Nobody's ever seen nature spelled that way, but that's the way I feel. Instructive nature it means the educational or informative quality of something, the ability of a situation or experience to teach or provide valuable lessons. An example could be the instructive nature of failure often provides valuable insights for future success. In the story, it was used in this sentence. It highlights the essence of perseverance, the instructive nature of errors, and the significance of supportive relationships. Significance. Love this word. Sig, nif, i, can, Significance. Significance. The importance or relevance of something. The quality of being worthy of attention or consideration. An example sentence would be the significance of the discovery cannot be overstated. It has the potential to revolutionize the field of medicine. In the story, it's used like this. It highlights the essence of perseverance, the instructive nature of errors, and the significance of supportive relationships. Supportive relationships. Support, give, relationships. Supportive relationships. Relationships characterized by encouragement, assistance, and mutual respect. Connections with others who provide emotional, practical, or moral support. An example would be, she relied on her supportive relationships with friends and family during difficult times. In the story, it was used as it highlights the essence of perseverance, the instructive nature of errors, and the significance of supportive relationships. Above all, it means most importantly, indicating that what follows is the primary or overriding consideration. Overriding is a good word. An example sentence could be, above all, we must prioritize the safety of our employees. In the story, it was used like this. Above all, it reaffirms that our true value is not measured by linguistic perfection by the courage to express ourselves and forge connections across linguistic divides. Reaffirms, reaffirms, reaffirms. It means confirms or strengthens a belief, decision, or commitment, often after it has been questioned or doubted. An example sentence could be, his success reaffirms my belief that hard work pays off in the end. In the sentence, I'm sorry, in the story, it was used like this. Above all, it reaffirms that our true value is not measured by linguistic perfection, but by the courage to express ourselves and forge connections across linguistic divides. Forge. For and then ja. I don't know how to spell ja, so J-A. Let's go there. It'll be very different. <laughs> Some languages it doesn't come out that way. I understand, but in English, it'd be ja. Forge. Forge. It means to create or establish something, especially through effort or skill, to form a strong and enduring relationship or connection. An example sentence could be, they forged a partnership based on trust and mutual respect. In the story, it was used as, above all, it reaffirms that our true value is not measured by linguistic perfection, but by the courage to express ourselves and forge connections across linguistic divides. Across linguistic divides. 
and you probably won't ever see this anywhere as a group of words, but it fits in this sentence, in this story. So let's go through it across. And then uh, we did linguistic before. Ling, guis, tick. Divides is divides, divides. Across linguistic divides. It means spanning or bridging the gaps or differences between different languages or linguistic communities. As an example, it could be their friendship transcended borders as they communicated effortlessly across linguistic divides to transcend something. Beautiful word. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Above all, it reaffirms that our true value is not measured by linguistic perfection, but by the courage to express ourselves and forge connections across linguistic divides. There you go. We got through that huge list of vocabulary. What I really want you to do, if you've made it this far, I want you now that you're comfortable with this vocabulary, go back, go back to the story too and read those paragraphs out loud. Use these words, say them, have self-assurance, confidence that you can use these words. Keep saying them, keep coming back, keep coming back. Use this as a course. This is a perfect opportunity for you to build your confident business English. Not even business English, just become confident using English through these stories. But you have to use these words. You got to go through all these different definitions and because you need to be comfortable and confident with the pronunciation, the definition and how to use them. Once that happens, go back and read story two. Read it out loud. Present it like I present it. Shadow me. Use it as shadow English speaking practice. It works. Really, it works. Try it. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to climb the third level? The eloquent level? Eloquence is a beautiful word. It just means to speak in such a beautiful way. That's the way I think about it. Let's give this a try. And as we first go through this, of course, it's going to be really difficult. It's just really difficult. But try it the first time. Then spend the time going through all the vocabulary with me. Don't just go over it because lots of the definitions in the vocabulary are really difficult. And I want you to take the time and you're going to have to translate or look up some different words. But become confident using these words that are in the, in the definitions. <laughs> Because the definitions, I, I built this thing. So the definitions would get harder and harder and harder as you climb these levels of fluency. That's very intentional on my part, okay? So we're gonna read the story. With some of you, maybe you should go read the definitions first and go through all the vocabulary first. Then come back and join me in this story story will make a lot more sense if you know what the words are and you've got confidence in it. So that's the way a lot of people use this. I built this this way so that you could go ahead. The timestamps are in the comments and in the description. You could go ahead to the definitions of all the vocabulary in story three, become comfortable and confident, and then come back to the story and present it with me. And then you can present it with confidence because the first time, You'll have no confidence going through here. I don't care how good your English is. The eloquent level is difficult. Are you ready? Let's do this. Story three, the eloquent level. <laughs> Nestled in the heart of a distant, vibrant landscape stood Maya, a business professional whose acumen and proficiency in her domain were unmatched. Her journey took a monumental leap forward as she accepted a position with a leading American corporation, an entity renowned for its global reach and English-only communication policy. This presented a double-edged sword of opportunity and challenge, the chance to ascend professionally while navigating the intricacies of conducting business in a non-native language. 
The commencement of her tenure was marked by a morning filled with a juxtaposition of emotions, the nervous anticipation akin to butterflies, and the resolute courage resembling eagles in flight. Adorning her most empowering attire, she stood before the mirror, a ritualistic affirmation of her readiness and capability. With a deep, steadying breath, she fortified her resolve with a quiet declaration. Your capabilities transcended the boundaries of language, Maya. Upon her arrival, the office presented itself as a bastion of industrious fervor and luminous ambition. Despite the initial disorientation amidst the flurry of activity, Maya was buoyed by the timeless wisdom imparted by her mother. Tackled challenges incrementally, with a measured stride, she approached the reception. Her introduction met with a cordial welcome. Greetings, Maya. I shall guide you to your designated workspace, announced the receptionist with a congenial smile. Her desk, a sanctuary of productivity, offered vistas of a serene park, a comforting semblance of familiarity in a new realm. Mr. Smith, her supervisor, soon made his acquaintance his demeanor embodying the perfect blend of professionalism and warmth. We warmly welcome you to our team, Maya. The linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability, he conveyed with reassuring clarity. Maya's response permeated with gratitude and a renewed zest for the challenges ahead. I am profoundly grateful, Mr. Smith. I'm committed to leveraging this opportunity to its fullest potential and contributing to our collective goals, she articulated with confidence. The ensuing weeks were a testament to Maya's unwavering commitment to her professional development. She immersed herself in the linguistic nuances of her environment, though not without occasional lapses. A notable incident occurred during a meeting where a linguistic faux pas led to a momentary lapse in communication. The air was thick with tension until John, a colleague, deftly clarified with a touch of humor, perhaps budget was the term you sought, not baguette. The moment of levity dissolved the awkwardness, allowing Maya to share in the laughter. John's mentorship became a cornerstone of Maya's acclimation process. He provided invaluable insights into the nuances of business communication and extended his support generously. Mastery of English is merely one facet of your professional prowess, he reminded her, emphasizing the nonlinear journey of language acquisition. As Maya's familiarity with the linguistic demands of her role deepened, so, too, did her integration into the team. Her initial trepidation gave way to a robust confidence, bolstered by her contributions and the collaborative spirit of her colleagues. This evolution from an outsider to a valued team member was marked by mutual respect and shared aspirations. The culmination of Maya's growth trajectory came when she was entrusted with the helm of a pivotal project. Despite the daunting nature of this responsibility, she approached it with a blend of analytical rigor and creative problem solving. The successful execution of the project was a collective achievement, celebrated with genuine camaraderie. Your leadership and strategic insights have been pivotal to our success, Mr. Smith lauded, acknowledging her contribution. In the quiet of the evening, Maya recounted her achievements to her mother, her voice a mixture of pride and humility. Today, I've led a project to fruition, a testament to our team's synergy and dedication. The pride in her mother's voice was palpable, a warm affirmation of Maya's inherent capabilities. Your journey is a beacon of determination and resilience, Maya. Your achievements are a reflection of your inner strength she conveyed. Reflecting on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, Maya contemplated the transformative arc of her experiences, from navigating initial uncertainties to embracing a leadership role. 
her growth was emblematic of a profound personal and professional evolution. Maya's narrative is a compelling exploration of the dynamics of professional growth in a globalized, linguistically diverse business environment. It underscores the pivotal role of perseverance, the educational value of navigating linguistic barriers, and the importance of a supportive professional network. Ultimately, it serves as a poignant reminder that true professional competency transcends linguistic proficiency, rooted instead in the ability to communicate effectively and adaptively in diverse settings. Wow, what a story. <laughs> For any of you, that's a challenge. I know it's a challenge. You might know some of those words, but it's probably not comfortable using many or most of those words, no matter what your English level is today. So if you want to climb that fluency ladder and get up to the eloquent level, you have some work to do. I know you have some work to do, but that's what this challenge is all about. Put in the work to really get the results and to build your confidence. So I had talked about this before where a good way to go through this video, I just went through this really difficult, eloquent story. Well, a great way to go through this is to go ahead and, and, and look at a paragraph full of vocabulary. Take the first paragraph and go through all the vocabulary with me in a few minutes here and become really comfortable with the pronunciation, with the definition, using it in a sentence, saying it out loud confidently. And when you can get comfortable with each of the vocabulary words through my deep learning method, then go back and try the first paragraph in this really difficult, eloquent story. And you'll see this huge difference. It really works. You can go through the entire story and you can go through all of these vocabulary words with me, or you can take it paragraph by paragraph. Or I'll give you one last thing that I talked about much earlier in this video, is you go all the way back to the basic level, and you start on the basic level. Read the first paragraph in the basic level. Then read the first paragraph in the advanced level. Now you can read the same paragraph in the eloquent level. And you can really feel that difference as you climb the fluency ladder. So there's many ways to do this. It, just be patient with it. Go slow to go fast. In other words, take your time. Go through the deep learning process. And your confidence will become much faster by going through this. Before we go into the vocabulary, there's one last thing I want to talk about. In this eloquent level, you're going to see some words that we talked about before. So some of those words, maybe they were in the basic English level. Some of these words, maybe they were in the advanced level. And if I talked about them before, I tried to not include them in this eloquent level. Of course, I make a mistake sometimes here with all these crazy words. So if I did talk about them before, I apologize. But... <laughs> You should not see the same words over again. They should be different from what you saw in the first two levels of the fluency ladder. I just want to be clear about that. If there's some difficult words and you don't see them, hopefully we talked about them before. If not, my apologies. <laughs> we'll try to get it right as we keep going forward. From an earlier video, it's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> All right. As we go through here, let's see what we can do with all of these difficult and interesting words in the eloquent level. Here we go. First word, vibrant. V and then I, vi, brand, vibrant. Just pronounce like that, vibrant. It means full of energy, enthusiasm, and brightness, lively and colorful. An example sentence could be, the vibrant atmosphere 
of the conference energized all the attendees, fostering creativity and collaboration. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Nestled in the heart of a distant, vibrant landscape stood Maya, a business professional whose acumen and proficiency in her domain were unmatched. Acumen, it's a great word. Ac, you, men. Acumen, that's it, just acumen. It means the ability to make good judgments and quick decisions, typically in particular domain or field. An example sentence could be, his acumen in financial matters helped the company navigate the economic downturn successfully. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Nestled in the heart of a distant, vibrant landscape stood Maya, a business professional whose acumen and proficiency in her domain were unmatched. Proficiency. Pro, fish, N, C. I like Grant's crazy pronunciation guide here. Proficiency. Proficiency. The skillfulness and expertise in performing a task or activity, often resulting from training or experience. An example sentence could be, her proficiency in software development enabled her to complete the project ahead of schedule. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence, a business professional whose acumen and proficiency in her domain were unmatched. Domain, do, main, domain. Domain has different meanings, so be careful with this one. They're kind of related when you think about them, but it's a little bit different than like www dot something, that's your domain name, although there's some similarities. It means a specific area or field of expertise, knowledge, or activity. An example sentence could be, in the field of medicine, oncology is a domain focused on the study and treatment of cancer. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. A business professional whose acumen and proficiency in her domain were unmatched. Unmatched. Unmatch. And then a bunch of D's at the end. Unmatched. Unmatched. It means without equal. Not surpassed by anyone or anything else. An example could be his dedication to excellence and customer service was unmatched in the industry. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. A business professional whose acumen and proficiency in her domain were unmatched. A monumental leap forward. You don't always see these words together, but they fit nicely here. So let's go through it. Monumental leap forward. Monumental leap forward. It means a significant and dramatic progress or advancement. An example sentence could be, the company's decision to invest in renewable energy marked a monumental leap forward in sustainability efforts. In the story, it was in this sentence. Her journey took a monumental leap forward as she accepted a position with a leading American corporation, an entity renowned for its global reach and English-only communication policy. Entity. N to T. Entity. Great word for you if you don't use this now. Please use it. Definition is something that exists as a single, complete, and self-contained unit, often with its own distinct identity or purpose or company. An example would be the newly formed company aimed to establish itself as a reputable entity in the technology sector. In the story, it was in this sentence. Her journey took a monumental leap forward as she accepted a position with a leading American corporation, an entity renowned for its global reach and English-only communication policy. Renowned. Re, and then the word noun, and a bunch of Ds at the end. Renowned. It means widely known and esteemed for excellence or distinction. If you don't know esteemed, it's a great word to look up. An example sentence, the chef's restaurant is renowned for its innovative cuisine and impeccable service. There's a good sentence. 
In the story, it was part of this sentence. An entity renowned for its global reach and English-only communication policy. Global reach. Global reach. Global reach. Global reach. Doesn't always go together, but it fits nicely here. It means the extent or capacity to influence or interact with people, organizations, or markets worldwide. An example sentence could be, the company's global reach allowed it to expand its customer base across continents. In the story, it was used this way. An entity renowned for its global reach, an English-only communication policy. Double-edged sword. No W in the pronunciation. Double-edged sword. Get rid of that W. Sword. It means a situation or decision that has both positive and negative consequences or aspects. An example sentence could be, the increased automation in the factory was a double-edged sword as it improved efficiency, but also led to job losses. In the story, it was used in this sentence. This presented a double-edged sword of opportunity and challenge. The chance to ascend professionally while navigating the intricacies of conducting business in a non-native language. Ascend. Ascend is to go up. Descend is to go down. Ascend. Ascend. It means to rise or move upward, often in terms of advancement or progression. An example sentence could be, after years of hard work and dedication, she finally began to ascend the corporate ladder. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. This presented a double-edged sword of opportunity and challenge, the chance to ascend professionally while navigating the intricacies of conducting business in a non-native language. Such a great sentence. <laughs> navigating. Na, nav, i, gate, teen. Navigating. Navigating. It means successfully finding one's way through or managing a situation, typically one that is complex or challenging. An example sentence could be navigating through the regulatory landscape requires a thorough understanding of compliance requirements. Yes, it does. In the story, it was used in this sentence. This presented a double-edged sword of opportunity and challenge, the chance to ascend professionally while navigating the intricacies of conducting business in a non-native language. What a sentence. Intricacies. Great word, by the way. Intricacies. 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 It means the complex details or elements of a situation, often requiring careful attention or understanding. An example sentence could be, the intricacies of international trade law can be difficult to navigate without legal experience. True. In the story, it was in this great sentence again, this presented a double-edged sword of opportunity and challenge the chance to ascend professionally while navigating the intricacies of conducting business in a non-native language. Conducting. Con, duck, teen. Conducting. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> it means carrying out or performing a particular activity, often with a sense of organization or procedure. An example sentence could be, the professor provided guidance on conducting research for the students' term papers. In the story, it was part of this sentence, the chance to ascend professionally while navigating the intricacies of conducting business in a non-native language. Commencement. 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 Commencement means the beginning or start of something, often referring to an event or process. An example sentence could be, the commencement of the project marked the team's dedication to achieving their goals. In the story, it was used in this sentence. 
The commencement of her tenure was marked by a morning filled with juxtaposition of emotions, the nervous anticipation akin to butterflies, and the resolute courage resembling eagles in flight. Tenure. Really just ten in the word your, like your book. Tenure. Tenure means the period of time during which someone holds a particular position or status. An example could be his tenure as CEO saw significant growth and expansion for the company. In the story, it was in this crazy sentence. The commencement of her tenure was marked by a morning filled with juxtaposition of emotions, the nervous anticipation akin to butterflies, and the resolute courage resembling eagles in flight. <laughs> okay, this one wins the crazy word award. I wasn't going to include it, but I never say this word because <laughs> nobody ever understands what it means. <laughs> so why say it? <laughs> but it's such a crazy word that I wanted to throw it in here for you. <laughs> so juxtaposition, juxtaposition, juxtaposition. It means the act of placing two or more things close together or side by side for the purpose of comparison or contrast. As an example, the artist's work is known for its juxtaposition of light and dark colors to create a striking effect. And in the story, it was in this crazy sentence again, the commencement of her tenure was marked by a morning filled with a juxtaposition of emotions. Nervous and anticipation akin to butterflies and the resolute courage resembling eagles in flight. Anticipation. Really good word if you don't use it. Anticipation. 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 It means the feeling of excitement, eagerness, or anxiety about something that is going to happen. An example sentence could be, the anticipation before the product launch was palpable Woo! among the team members. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The commencement of her tenure was marked by a morning filled with a juxtaposition of emotions, the nervous anticipation akin to butterflies, and the resolute courage resembling eagles in flight. Akin. Ah. Akin, akin, means same, same, just like this, means similar to or in harmony with something else, possessing re resemblance or likeness. An example would be his writing style is akin to that of Hemingway, characterized by brevity and simplicity. Really good words in there. Look them up. In the story, it was part of this sentence, the nervous anticipation akin to butterflies and the resolute courage resembling eagles in flight. Resolute. 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 It means admirably determined, unwavering, and purposeful in achieving a goal or resolving a problem. An example sentence could be, despite facing numerous obstacles, she remained resolute in her decision to pursue her dreams. Great sentence. In the story, it was part of this sentence. The nervous anticipation akin to butterflies and the resolute courage resembling eagles in flight. Resembling. 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 It means having a similar appearance or likeness to something else. An example sentence could be, the new sculpture closely resembled the one created by the famous artist. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. The nervous anticipation akin to butterflies and the resolute courage resembling eagles in flight. Adorning. 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 It means decorating or embellishing something with Adornments or accessories. <laughs> An example sentence would be, she spent hours adorning the Christmas tree with lights and ornaments. In the story, it was adorning her most imp 
towering attire. She stood before the mirror, a ritualistic affirmation of her readiness and capability. Empowering. M. Powering. Empowering. Empowering, providing someone with the tools, resources, or confidence that take control of their life or situation. An example sentence could be, the workshop aimed to provide women with empowering strategies for career advancement. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Adorning her most empowering attire, she stood before the mirror, a ritualistic affirmation of her readiness and capability. Attire, a uh, tire, attire. <laughs> it means clothing or garments worn for a particular occasion or purpose. An example sentence could be business attire typically includes a suit and tie for men and a professional dress or pantsuit for women. I'm not wearing a suit, okay? No suits. Unless somebody dies. And a uh, story. It was used in this sentence, adorning her most empowering attire, she stood before the mirror, a ritualistic affirmation of her readiness and capability. Ritualistic. Rich, you, all, is, tick. Ritualistic. Ritualistic. It means relating to or characteristic of a ritual which is a series of actions performed in a customary and often symbolic manner. An example sentence could be, the tribe's dance around the fire was a ritualistic ceremony performed during harvest season. In the story, it was used this way. Adorning her most empowering attire, she stood before the mirror, a ritualistic affirmation of her readiness and capability. Affirmation. Aff firm a shun affirmation affirmation a positive declaration or statement asserting the truth or validity of something a really good word validity daily affirmations can help cultivate a positive mindset and boost self-confidence in the story it was used in this sentence adorning her most empowering attire she stood before the mirror a ritualistic affirmation of her readiness and capability. Readiness. Ready? Ness. Readiness. Means the state of being fully prepared, equipped, or mentally inclined to handle a situation or task. Inclined. Good word. Example sentence could be, the team's readiness for the presentation was evident in their thorough preparation and rehearsal. In the story, it was used this way. Adorning her most empowering attire, she stood before the mirror, a ritualistic affirmation of her readiness and capability. 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 Capability means the ability or capacity to perform or achieve something. An example sentence could be, his technical capabilities allowed him to troubleshoot and fix the problem quickly. In the story, it was in this sentence. With a deep, steadying breath, she fortified her resolve with a quiet declaration. Your capabilities transcend the boundaries of language, Maya. <laughs> steadying breath. Stead, E, ing, breath. Breath, steadying breath. You kind of need that steadying breath. Steadying breath. It means a deep breath taken to calm oneself, regain composure, or prepare for a challenging situation. An example sentence could be, before stepping onto the stage, the actor took a steadying breath to calm his nerves. In the story, it was used in this sentence, with a deep, steadying breath. She fortified her resolve with a quiet declaration. Your capabilities transcend the boundaries of language, Maya. Fortified someone's resolve. So to fortify, fortified 
resolve. Fortified, fortified, resolve, resolve. Fortified, resolve. In this case, it means strengthened or reinforced someone's determination, commitment, or purpose. An example sentence could be, despite facing setbacks, she fortified her resolve to achieve her goals. In the story, it was used in this sentence. With a deep, steadying breath, she fortified her resolve with a quiet declaration. Your capabilities transcend the boundaries of language, Maya. Declaration. Dec, la, re, shun. Declaration. Declaration. It means a formal or explicit statement or announcement, often expressing one's intentions, beliefs, or convictions. An example sentence could be, the company issued a declaration of its commitment to sustainability initiatives. In the story, it was used in this sentence. With a deep, steadying breath, she fortified her resolve with a quiet declaration. Your capabilities transcend the boundaries of language, Maya. Transcend. 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 Transcend, to rise above or go beyond the limits of something, often in terms of quality, importance, or understanding. His artwork seemed to transcend mere paint and canvas, evoking deep emotions in the viewers. In the story, it was used again in this sentence. With a deep, steadying breath, she fortified her resolve with a quiet declaration. Your capabilities transcend the boundaries of language, Maya. Boundaries. Bound. Rees. Boundaries. It means limits or constraints that define the extent or scope of something, whether physical, mental, or conceptual. An example sentence could be, it's important to respect personal boundaries in any relationship. Oh, yes, it is. In the story, it was used again in this sentence. With a deep, steadying breath, she fortified her resolve with a quiet declaration. Your capabilities transcend the boundaries of language, Maya. Bastion. <laughs> I like Grant's crazy pronunciation guide here. Bast chin. Chin. Bastion. A bastion what it is, a bastion. It means a stronghold or fortified place, often used metaphorically to describe something that provides protection, support, or defense, like a castle. An example sentence would be, the library served as a bastion of knowledge and learning in the community. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. Upon her arrival, the office presented itself as a bastion of industrious fervor and luminous ambition. Industrious. It's a really good word. Industrious. Industrious. Industrious means diligent, hardworking, and actively engaged in work or activity. An example sentence could be, the industrious team completed the project ahead of schedule due to their dedication and effort. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The office presented itself as a bastion of industrious fervor and luminous ambition. Fervor. 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 It means intense and passionate enthusiasm or zeal for a particular activity or cause. An example sentence would be, the candidate spoke with fervor about her vision for the future of the company. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The office presented itself as a bastion of industrious fervor and luminous ambition. Luminous. Lu, min, us. Luminous. It means emitting or reflecting bright light full of light or shining brightly. 
An example sentence could be, the artist's painting featured luminous colors that seemed to glow from within. In the story, it was used as the sentence. The office presented itself as a bastion of industrious fervor and luminous ambition. Ambition. Am-bi-shun. Ambition. Ambition. A strong desire and determination to achieve success, power, wealth, or a particular goal. An example could be her ambition to become CEO motivated her to work tirelessly and pursue opportunities for advancement. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The office presented itself as a bastion of industrious fervor and luminous ambition. So many great words in that one sentence. <laughs> Disorientation. Dis or e entation. Disorientation. Disorientation. Disorientation means a state of confusion or lack of direction, often resulting from being in an unfamiliar or disconcerting environment. Disconcerting. Great word. An example sentence would be, the sudden change in altitude caused a sense of disorientation for the hikers. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Despite the initial disorientation amidst the flurry of activity, Maya was buoyed by the timeless wisdom imparted by her mother. Amidst. <laughs> ah, midst. Amidst. It means surrounded by, in the middle of, or among. An example sentence could be, amidst the chaos of the city, she found moments of peace in the park. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Despite the initial disorientation, amidst the flurry of activity, Maya was buoyed by the timeless wisdom imparted by her mother. Flurry of activity. Flur e of Activity. activity, flurry of activity, flurry of activity, a sudden and hectic burst of action or movement, often involving a lot of activity or commotion, good word, commotion, <laughs> and also hectic, look those up. An example sentence could be, the launch of the new product sparked a flurry of activity in the marketing department. In the story, again, it was used in this sentence. Despite the initial disorientation amidst the flurry of activity, Maya was buoyed by the timeless wisdom imparted by her mother. As I say these, I want you to say these with me. Get that same feeling of confidence. Use these. Practice your shadow English speaking with me. Buoyed. 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 Buoyed, supported or uplifted by something, often emotionally or mentally. An example sentence could be the positive feedback from her colleagues buoyed her spirits after a challenging presentation. Again, in this sentence, it was used this way. Despite the initial disorientation amidst the flurry of activity, Maya was buoyed by the timeless wisdom imparted by her mother. Timeless wisdom. Timeless wisdom means insight or knowledge that remains relevant and valuable across different times and situations, or forever. An example sentence could be, the timeless wisdom of treating others with kindness is a principle that transcends cultural differences, something that our world needs much more of. In the story, again, it was in this sentence. Despite the initial disorientation amidst the flurry of activity, Maya was buoyed by the timeless wisdom imparted by her mother. Imparted. 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 To pass on or convey knowledge, information, or wisdom to others. An example could be the teacher imparted valuable life lessons to her students beyond just academic knowledge. In the story, again, it was in this sentence. Despite the initial disorientation amidst the flurry of activity, Maya was buoyed by the timeless wisdom imparted by her mother. Your 
mother always has great wisdom. Tackle. 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 It means to deal with or handle a problem, challenge, or task in a determined or effective way. An example could be the team collaborated to tackle the complex project and overcome obstacles together. In the story, it was part of this sentence. Tackle challenges incrementally. Incrementally. In cra men tali incrementally incrementally is a really good word in a, in small gradual steps or stages typically one at a time an example could be the software was improved incrementally through a series of updates and patches in the story it was part of this sentence tackle challenges incrementally measured stride measured Stride, measured stride. Measured stride, it means walking with deliberate and controlled steps, often indicating confidence or composure. An example sentence could be, the CEO entered the boardroom with a measured stride, exuding authority and professionalism. Exuding, look up that word. In the story, it was used in this sentence. With a measured stride, she approached the reception. Her introduction met with a cordial welcome. Cordial. This is a beautiful word. Cordial. 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 Warm, friendly, and polite in manner or behavior. The colleagues greeted each other with cordial smiles and handshakes. And the story was used in this sentence. Greetings, Maya. I shall guide you to your designated workspace, announced the receptionist with a cordial smile. How nice. Designated. Des-ig-na-ted. Designated. Designated. It means officially appointed or assigned by a particular purpose or role. An example sentence could be, the designated driver abstained from alcohol to ensure the safe transportation of the group. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Greetings, Maya. I shall guide you to your designated workspace, announced the receptionist with a cordial smile. Congenial. Really good word. Con-gene-e-l. Congenial. 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 It means pleasant, friendly, and agreeable, especially in social interactions. An example could be the team members enjoyed working together because of their congenial atmosphere. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Greetings, Maya. I shall guide you to your designated workspace, announced the receptionist with a congenial smile. Vistas. 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 Vistas, a pleasing view, especially one seen through a long, narrow opening. An example could be, from the top of the hill, they had vistas of the entire city spread out before them. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Her desk, a sanctuary of productivity, offered vistas of a serene park, a comforting semblance of familiarity in a new realm. Serene, sir, and then een. Serene, serene, it means calm, peaceful, and untroubled, free from stress or agitation. An example could be the serene lake reflected the colors of the sunset, creating a tranquil atmosphere. In the story, it was her desk, a sanctuary of productivity, offered vistas of a serene park, a comforting semblance of familiarity in a new realm. Semblance of familiarity. Semblance of familiarity. Familiarity is a really hard word to say. Let's go through it again. Semblance of familiarity familiarity 
semblance of familiarity. A resemblance, <laughs> there's a good word, or similarity to something familiar, often providing a sense of comfort or recognition in a new or unfamiliar environment. An example sentence could be, the quaint architecture of the town gave her a semblance of familiarity in the midst of her travels. In the story, it was used in the sentence. Her desk, a sanctuary of productivity, offered vistas of a serene park, a comforting semblance of familiarity in a new realm. Realm. It doesn't, it's not pronounced the way it looks, so I think of it as R-E-L-L, rel, and then a bunch of M's. Realm. Not realm. Realm. I don't know who came up with this crazy pronunciation, but anyway. Realm. A particular field, area, domain, or sphere of activity, influence, or knowledge. An example could be the realm of science fiction explores possibilities beyond our current understanding of the universe. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Her desk, a sanctuary of productivity, offered vistas of a serene park, a comforting semblance of familiarity in a new realm made his acquaintance made and his are okay right a quaint ants acquaintance acquaintance made his acquaintance to meet and become familiar with someone often for the first time an example could be at the networking event she made the acquaintance of several influential industry professionals in the story it was used this way mr smith her supervisor, soon made his acquaintance, his demeanor embodying the perfect blend of professionalism and warmth. Embodying. M, body, ing, embodying. Embodying it means to represent or exemplify a quality or idea in a tangible or visible form. Now there's a good definition. You might have to look up a few words. The statue perfectly embodied the spirit of freedom and resilience. In the story, it was used this way. Mr. Smith, her supervisor, soon made his acquaintance, his demeanor embodying the perfect blend of professionalism and warmth. Oh, good old Mr. Smith. So kind. Blend. I don't know how else to spell it. So blend. Blend. To mix or combine different elements or qualities together harmoniously. Look up that word. An example could be the new product is a blend of innovative technology and sleek design. In the story, it was Mr. Smith, her supervisor, soon made his acquaintance, his demeanor embodying the perfect blend of professionalism and warmth. So nice. Warmth. Warm, and then a TH that goes on forever. Warmth. Warmth. Friendliness. Kindness or affection expressed in one's manner or behavior. An example could be her warmth and generosity made everyone feel welcome in her home. In the story, it was used this way. Mr. Smith, her supervisor, soon made his acquaintance. His demeanor embodying the perfect blend of professionalism and warmth. Linguistic barriers. We've seen linguistic a few times in here, so linguistic. Barriers is bear ears. Barriers. Linguistic barriers. Language difficulties. Obstacles or difficulties in communication that arise due to differences in language or linguistic abilities. And an example sentence could be, in multinational companies, linguistic barriers can hinder effective collaboration among team members from diverse linguistic backgrounds. If you don't know hinder, there's a great word for you. Story sentence, the linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability, he conveyed with reassuring clarity. Whew, that's a sentence. Perceive, here's a great word. 
you don't use this word, you should start using this word. Perceive. Perceive. To become aware of, recognize, or understand something through the senses or mental faculties. Whatever you think about, you don't know it yet, but you have a thought about something. What do you perceive this will be like? An example would be, she perceived a change in his attitude based on his tone of voice. In the story, it was used in this crazy sentence. The linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability, he conveyed with reassuring clarity. Dissolve. 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 To gradually disappear, disperse, or become resolved, often referring to a problem or barrier. An example would be, with effective communication and cooperation, misunderstandings between team members can dissolve over time. In the story, it was used in this sentence, the linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability. He conveyed with reassuring clarity. <laughs> Sentence is fantastic. <laughs> it's so difficult. <laughs> bolstered by. We've seen bolstered, but bolstered by. Bolstered by. Bolstered by. To strengthen. Pronounce that one. Strengthen. To strengthen, support, or reinforce something. Often by adding additional resources. Encouragement or assistance. An example could be the new evidence bolstered their case and increased their chances of winning in court. A story In the story, it was used as the linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability, he conveyed with reassuring clarity. Collective support. Collective support. Collective support it means assistance, encouragement, or backing provided by a group of people working together towards a common goal. In the sentence, an example sentence would be, the success of the project was due to the collective support and effort of the entire team. In the story, it was used this way. The linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability, he conveyed with reassuring clarity. Intrinsic, 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 means belonging naturally, inherent or essential to something. Inherent is a good word. Example sentence would be, his intrinsic motivation to succeed drove him to achieve his goals despite the challenges. In the story, it was used like this. The linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability, he conveyed with reassuring clarity. Adaptability. Adaptability. Adaptability, 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 the ability to adjust or change in response to new conditions or circumstances. An example could be, in today's fast-paced business environment, adaptability is a crucial skill for success. Again, in the story, it was used in this crazy sentence. The linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability. He conveyed with reassuring clarity. Reassuring. Reassuring. Reassuring means providing comfort, support, or confidence, alleviating doubts or concerns, alleviating, super word. An example could be, his words were reassuring, calming her nerves before the big presentation. In the story, it was used again in this sentence, the linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic adaptability, he conveyed with reassuring clarity. Clarity. Clare. Eddie. Clarity. 
It means clearness or lucidity. <laughs> There's a word for you, lucidity in expression, thought, or understanding. The quality of being easily understood or perceived. An example could be the instructions were written with such clarity that even beginners could follow them easily. In the story, it was used as the linguistic barriers you perceive today will dissolve with time, bolstered by our collective support and your intrinsic ability. He conveyed with reassuring clarity. <laughs> Permeated with gratitude. Her, me, aided with gra. Tude. Permeated with gratitude. <laughs> this is really good, to be honest with you. Permeated with gratitude. It means filled or saturated with a, a deep sense of thankfulness or appreciation. An example could be her letter was permeated with gratitude for all the help she had received during her difficult time. In the story, it was used this way. Maya's response permeated with gratitude and a renewed zest for the challenges ahead. Renewed zest. Renewed zest. Renewed zest. Renewed zest. It means a revived or reinvigorated, in other words, reinvigorated enthusiasm, energy, or excitement for something. An example sentence could be, after her vacation, she returned to work with a renewed zest for her projects. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Maya's response permeated with gratitude and a renewed zest for the challenges ahead. Profoundly grateful. This is beautiful. Profoundly grateful. Profoundly grateful. Deeply thankful or appreciative, often with a strong emotional intensity. An example could be she was profoundly grateful for the support she received during her time of need. In the story, it was used like this. I am profoundly grateful, Mr. Smith. I am committed to leveraging this opportunity to its fullest potential and contributing to our collective goals. She articulated with confidence. <laughs> leveraging. Lev ra jean. <laughs> leveraging. Leveraging. I really like how I did this, to be honest with you. Leveraging. Sorry, I'm just laughing at my own crazy pronunciation guide here. It means to use something to maximum advantage, often by exploiting its potential or resources. Exploiting. Another great word. An example sentence could be, the company aimed to leverage its brand reputation to expand into new markets. In the story, it was used in this great Series of sentences. I am profoundly grateful, Mr. Smith. I am committed to leveraging this opportunity to its fullest potential and contributing to our collective goals. She articulated with confidence. Fullest potential. Full est potential. Fullest potential. It means the maximum capability or capacity that someone or something can achieve or reach. An example could be, with hard work and dedication, she was determined to reach her fullest potential in her career. In the story, it was used in this way. I am profoundly grateful, Mr. Smith. I am committed to leveraging this opportunity to its fullest potential and contributing to our collective goals. She articulated with confidence. Did you catch how I read something wrong there? <laughs> articulated. Great word. Ar tick 
articulated. 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 It means expressing or stating something clearly and precisely, often in words or speech. She articulated her thoughts on the matter with eloquence. Look at that. To be eloquent, you should have eloquence and conviction. Perfect name for this ladder of fluency. In the story, again, I am profoundly grateful, Mr. Smith. I am committed to leveraging this opportunity to its fullest potential and contributing to our collective goals. She articulated with confidence. Ensuing. 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 It means occurring or happening afterward as a result or consequence of something. As an example, the changes in company policy led to an ensuing increase in employee morale. In the story, it was used this way. The ensuing weeks were a testament to Maya's unwavering commitment to her professional development. A testament to. A testament to. A testament to means evidence or proof of something, serving as a confirmation or demonstration of a particular quality or attribute. An example could be his successful career is a testament to his hard work and determination. In the story, it was used this way. The ensuing weeks were a testament to Maya's unwavering commitment to her professional development. Unwavering. 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 It means firm and determined, not wavering or faltering in one's course of action or beliefs. An example could be, despite facing challenges, her unwavering dedication to her goals never wavered. <laughs> in the story, it was used this way. The ensuing weeks were a testament to Maya's unwavering commitment to her professional development. Immerse someone in something. Immersed. Immersed. Again, I feel a T at the end of many of these words that end in ED. I don't have a great rule for you, but that's what I feel. Immersed in. It means to become fully involved or absorbed in something. An example sentence could be, she immersed herself in the study of ancient history during her sabbatical. Look it up if you don't know it. Very academic. Uh, in the story, it was used, she immersed herself in the linguistic nuances of her environment, though not without occasional lapses. Nuances. 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 It means subtle differences or variations in meaning, expression, or understanding, often requiring careful observation or interpretation. Subtle is a great word. If you don't know it, become comfortable with it. Fantastic word. An example would be understanding the cultural nuances of a language can help avoid misunderstandings in communication. In the story, it was used this way. She immersed herself in the linguistic nuances of her environment, though not without occasional lapses. Environment. 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 Environment has multiple meanings, so make sure you understand this one. It means the surroundings or conditions in which a person, animal, or plant lives or operates. A healthy work environment? fosters productivity and employee well-being. In the story, it was used here. She immersed herself in the linguistic nuances of her environment, though not without occasional lapses. Occasional lapses. Occasional lapses. Occasional lapses. Occasional lapses. Occasional lapses. It means a temporary or occasional failure or mistake, often in judgment, behavior, or performance. An example could be, despite her diligence, she experienced an occasional lapse in attention during long meetings. Don't we all? In the story, 
It was used here. She immersed herself in the living wind. <laughs> I struggle with this sentence. She immersed herself in the linguistic nuances of her environment, though not without occasional lapses. There, I'm not AI. See? <laughs> Notable incident occurred. You see these words. <laughs> You don't see these words together that often, so I like this phrase. No ta bull in se dent occurred. occurred. Notable incident occurred. A notable incident occurred means an event or, or occurrence that is worthy of attention or remark, often due to its significance or impact. An example could be the launch of the new product was a notable incident in the company's history. In the story, it was used this way. A notable incident occurred during a meeting where a linguistic faux pas led to a momentary lapse in communication. Faux pas. Very, very French. <laughs> it's like missing your step here. Faux pas. Very common. Uh, all over the world, a faux pas means uh, it's pronounced faux pas. Faux pas. It means uh, an embarrassing or tactless act or tactless. Another good word, a tactless act or remark in a social situation, often violating accepted norms of behavior. An example could be making a joke about someone's appearance can be a social faux pas. In the story, it was used like this. A notable incident occurred during a meeting where a linguistic faux pas led to a momentary lapse in communication. Momentary lapse. Momentary lapse. Momentary lapse. A momentary lapse means a brief period of inattention, error, or forgetfulness, often followed by a return to normal or expected behavior. An example could be, after a momentary lapse in concentration, she quickly regained her focus and continued working. And the story is used like this. A notable incident occurred during a meeting where a linguistic faux pas led to a momentary lapse in communication. The air was thick with tension. It's a great phrase. The air was thick with tension. 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 It means uh, there was a strong feeling of unease, anxiety, or hostility in the atmosphere. An example could be, as the deadline approached, the air was thick with tension in the office. In the story, it was used like this. The air was thick with tension until John, a colleague, deftly clarified with a touch of humor. Deftly was a really eloquent word. Deftly, 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 very difficult to pronounce, deftly. It means skillfully and quickly with precision and dexterity. Ooh, look up that word. She deftly maneuvered through the crowded room to reach the exit. In the story, it was used like this. The air was thick with tension until John, a colleague, deftly clarified with a touch of humor. A touch of humor. That's a really nice way to say this. <laughs> he was funny. A touch of humor. Humor means funny. Definition is a small amount or hint of amusement or lightheartedness added to a situation, often to ease tension or make something more enjoyable. An example could be, she added a touch of humor to her presentation to keep the audience engaged. In the story, it was used like this. The air was thick with tension until John, a colleague, deftly clarified with a touch of humor. Sought. Sought is the past tense of seek. Pronounced sought. Sought. Just the past tense of seek, a verb. It means to try to find, obtain, or achieve something, the past tense of seek. 
example would be she sought advice from her mentor before making a major decision. In the story, it was used like this. Perhaps budget was the term you sought, not baguette. A moment of levity. That's a nice phrase. Moment of levity. A moment of levity. A brief period or instance of lightness, humor, or amusement in a serious or tense situation. An example could be the joke provided a moment of levity during this stressful meeting. In the story, it was used here. In a, the moment of levity dissolved the awkwardness, allowing Maya to share in the laughter. Dissolved, dissolved, dissolve. Means to disappear, fade away, or cease to exist, often gradually or as a result of a change in circumstances. The tension in the room dissolved once everyone realized it was just a misunderstanding. In the story, it was used like this. The moment of levity dissolved the awkwardness, allowing Maya to share in the laughter. The awkwardness. 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 The awkwardness means the, a state of discomfort or embarrassment, often resulting from a lack of ease or social grace in a situation. An example could be, there was an awkwardness in the air after the unexpected interruption. In the story, it was used like this. The moment of levity dissolved the awkwardness, allowing Maya to share in the laughter. Cornerstone. Cornerstone. Cornerstone means an essential or fundamental element upon which something depends or is based, a crucial or central part of something. An example could be communication is often considered the cornerstone of a healthy relationship. Oh, yes, it is. In the story, it was used in this sentence. John's mentorship became a cornerstone of Maya's acclimation process. Acclamation, really good word. Ac, lim, a, shun. Acclamation, acclamation, acclamation. The process of becoming accustomed to a new environment, situation, or climate. An example could be, it took some time for the new employee to acclimate to the fast-paced work environment. In the story, it was used in this sentence. John's mentorship became a cornerstone of Maya's acclimation process. Invaluable insights. This is a hard word for almost everybody to pronounce. Invaluable. 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 It means extremely useful or valuable information, knowledge, or understanding that is difficult or impossible to replace. An example could be her mentor provided invaluable insights into the industry that she couldn't have gained elsewhere. In the story, it was used like this. He provided invaluable insights into the nuances of business communication and extended his support generously. Extended. 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 Extended means offered or provided something, often in terms of assistance, help, or support. An example could be the company extended an invitation to the conference to all employees. In the story, it was used like this. He provided invaluable insights into the nuances of business communication and extended his support generously. Generously. I like my crazy pronunciation guide here. Gen er us Lee. Generously. Generously. In a liberal, ample, or magnanimous. Woo, look up those words. <laughs> Freely and willingly providing assistance, resources, or support means you give a lot. Time, effort, energy. <laughs> She, an example could be she donated generously to the charity, helping to fund important projects in the community. 
In the story, it was used like this. He provided invaluable insights into the nuances of business communication and extended his support generously. Merely. 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 This is exactly what it means. It means only, or just, or simply. Used to emphasize the smallness or insignificance of something. The example sentence could be, it's not merely about meeting deadlines. It's about delivering quality work. And the story was used like this. Mastery of English is merely one facet of your professional prowess. Facet. 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 It's a really good word. Facet means a particular aspect or feature of something. Example could be, one facet of his personality is his unwavering determination. The story was used like this. Mastery of English is merely one facet of your professional prowess. Prowess. I always think of a lion. Prowess, prowess means exceptional skill, ability, or expertise in a particular field or activity. An example could be her prowess in negotiation helped her secure favorable deals for the company. And the story is used again in this sentence. Mastery of English is merely one facet of your professional prowess. Emphasizing M. Emphasizing. 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 Means giving special importance or prominence to something, highlighting or underscoring a particular point or aspect. It's a hard word for people to pronounce. That's why I included it in, it in here. An example could be the speaker emphasized the importance of teamwork in achieving organizational goals. In the story, it was used as part of this sentence. He reminded her, emphasizing the nonlinear journey of language acquisition. Nonlinear journey. Linear is a line, so he didn't take the straight line. Nonlinear journey. Nonlinear journey. A nonlinear journey. Again, linear would be a straight line. A journey or a process that does not follow a straight or direct path, characterized by twists, turns, and varying progress over time. An example could be learning a new skill is often a nonlinear journey with ups and downs along the way. Kind of like trying to learn English. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Mastery of English is merely one facet of your professional prowess, he reminded her emphasizing the non-linear journey of language acquisition. Language acquisition. Acquisition. <laughs> I like my pronunciation guide again here. Acquisition. Acquisition. Language acquisition is a process of learning a new language, typically involving the development of speaking, listening, reading, and writing skills. An example could be language acquisition can be challenging, but rewarding, leading to enhanced communication and cultural understanding. The story was used like this. Mastery of English is merely a facet of professional prowess, he reminded her, emphasizing the nonlinear journey of tangible acquisition. Familiarity, familiarity. Fam, ill, your, air, iti, familiarity, familiarity. This is a really difficult word for everybody to pronounce. So first you get familiarity and then you get acquaintance. Ready? Close acquaintance with or knowledge of something. An example could be her familiarity with a company's procedures helped her adapt quickly to her new role. In the story, it was used like this. Her desk, a sanctuary of productivity, offered vistas of a serene park, a comforting semblance of familiarity in a new realm. Integration. 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 
It means the act or process of combining or incorporating different elements into a unified whole. An example sentence could be, it is critical to have integration between your strategy and tactics. In the story, it was used in this sentence, as Maya's familiarity with linguistic demands of her role deepened, so too did her integration into the team. Trepidation gave way. <laughs> You've seen trepidation, but let's go through it again and, and let's add gave way to it because it, it's a really nice phrase. So trepidation again is tre pi trepid a shun trepidation 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 gave way when something gives way it usually means it's replaced by something else so trepidation gave way it means fear or anxiety about something that gives way or is replaced by a different feeling or state an example sentence could be her initial trepidation about public speaking gave way to confidence after several successful presentations. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Her initial trepidation gave way to a robust confidence bolstered by her contributions and the collaborative spirit of her colleagues. Robust. We've seen before, but here it is again. Robust. Robust means strong, healthy, vigorous, or full of energy characterized by strength and resilience. An example sentence could be, the company enjoyed robust growth in sales last quarter. In the story, it was used this way. Her initial trepidation gave way to a robust confidence bolstered by her contributions and the collaborative spirit of her colleagues. Contributions. We've seen different uses of contribute, contributions, <laughs> But let's do it again. Contributions. 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 It means the act of giving or supplying something, often in terms of effort, resources, or ideas, to help achieve a common goal or purpose. An example sentence could be, his contributions to the project were invaluable and greatly appreciated by the team. In the story, it was used like this. Her initial trepidation gave way to a robust confidence bolstered by her contributions and the collective spirit of her colleagues. Collaborative spirit. Collaborative spirit. We've seen a few different collaboratives, but let's go through this. Collaborative. 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 Spirit. To me, it's spear with an it. Spirit. So collaborative spirit, it means a shared willingness or enthusiasm among a group of people to work together cooperatively toward a common goal or objective. An example sentence could be, the collaborative spirit among team members was key to the project's success. In the story, it was used this way. Her initial trepidation gave way to a robust confidence bolstered by her contributions and the collaborative spirit of her colleagues. Evolution. 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 It means the gradual development or change of something over time, often involving growth, improvement, or adaptation. An example could be the evolution of technology has transformed how we communicate with each other. In the story, it was used in this sentence. This evolution from an outsider to a valued team member was marked by mutual respect and shared aspirations. Outsider. It's not hard to pronounce, but let's go through the definition because this is a good word. It means a person who is not part of a particular group or community, someone who is perceived as being different or separate from others. As an example, as a newcomer to the company, she initially felt like an outsider among her colleagues. In the story, it was used in this sentence. This evolution from an outsider to a valued team member was marked by mutual respect and shared aspirations. Marked by mutual respect. 
It's not always used this way, but again, this is a good phrase. So marked. Again, I feel a T at the end of that. Not marked, duh, 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 but marked. By, I wish I had a rule for you for that, but I don't have a rule. That's just the way it sounds to me. It's the way it feels to me. So marked by mu, ch, well, mutual, mutual respect. Mutual respect. Marked by mutual respect means characterized or distinguished by a shared feeling or admiration, esteem or regard between individuals or groups. Their professional relationship was marked by mutual respect for each other's expertise. In the story, it was used this way. This evolution from an outsider to a valued team member was marked by mutual respect and shared aspirations. Shared aspirations. Shared d -d 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 -d. aspirations. Aspirations. Shared aspirations. Shared aspirations it means common hopes, goals, or ambitions that are held or pursued by multiple individuals or groups. An example sentence could be the team's shared aspirations for success drove them to work together towards their common objective. In the story, it was used like this. This evolution from an outsider to a valued team member was marked by mutual respect and shared aspirations. Culmination is a really good word. Culmination. Culmination. Culmination means the highest point or final stage in a series of events, the climax or conclusion of a process. An example could be the successful completion of the project was the culmination of months of hard work and dedication. In the story, it was used this way. The culmination of Maya's growth trajectory came when she was entrusted with the helm of a pivotal project. Growth trajectory. This isn't always used together, but it fits really well. It's one of those things they call a collocation. Two words that fit together well. So growth, try to get the TH on the end of that thing. Trajectory, 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 growth, trajectory. Woo. The path or direction of development, progress, or advancement over time. An example could be the company's growth trajectory shows steady expansion over the past decade. In the story, it was used this way. The culmination of Maya's growth trajectory came when she was entrusted with the helm of a pivotal project. To be entrusted with something, this is a really nice way to say something. So, entrusted. <laughs> entrusted. <laughs> I feel a dead on the end of that. <laughs> Maybe I could get rid of the dead, just make it dud. <laughs> but entrusted. Entrusted with. It means given responsibility for something valuable or important, assigned a task or duty that requires trust and confidence. An example could be she was entrusted with the task of leading the team through the project's completion. In the story, it was used this way. The culmination of Maya's growth trajectory came when she was entrusted with the helm of a pivotal project. Helm. 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 Helm means the position or role of leadership, control, or authority, often symbolized by the steering mechanism of a ship, a captain at the helm of the ship. <laughs> Somebody will tell me I'm not steering the ship properly. An example sentence could be, as the project manager, she took the helm and guided the team towards success. In the story, it was used this way. The culmination of Maya's growth trajectory came when she was entrusted with the helm of a pivotal project. Pivotal. Another really good word. Pivotal. piv a -tel. Pivotal. Pivotal. It means of crucial importance, significance, or relevance, often having a strong influence on the outcome of events. An example could be, his discovery was pivotal in advancing scientific understanding in the field. 
In the story, it was used in this sentence. The culmination of Maya's growth trajectory came when she was entrusted with the helm of a pivotal project. Daunting nature. These words don't always go together either, but that's a good little phrase together. Daunting. Daunting. Doesn't look like that, but that's how you pronounce it. Nature. Nature. Daunting nature. Daunting nature means the intimidating or challenging quality of a task or situation that requires significant effort, skill, or courage to overcome. An example sentence would be, the daunting nature of the project made her hesitate before accepting the challenge. In the story, it was used this way. The daunting nature of this responsibility left Maya feeling a mixture of excitement and apprehension. Approached. Here's another one of these words that ends in ed, and I feel a t at the end. Approached. I know, it ends in ed, and nobody should tell you it sounds like t, but that's what it sounds like to me. Approached. Has different meanings, so let's pay attention to this meaning. It means to move closer to someone or something in distance, time, or effort. To begin to deal with a task or situation. There's a couple of different definitions there. An example could be she approached the difficult conversation with caution and empathy. In the story, it was used this way. Despite the daunting nature of this responsibility, Maya approached it with a blend of analytical rigor and creative problem solving. Analytical rigor. <laughs> you don't see these two words together that often, but they fit pretty nicely in this story. So analytical rigor. Analytical rigor. Analytical rigor. Analytical rigor. It means the thoroughness. There's a good word to pronounce. Thoroughness. Thoroughness. The thoroughness, precision, and systematic approach applied to the analysis of data, problems, or situations. An example could be her analytical rigor allowed her to identify patterns and trends in the market data. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Despite the daunting nature of this responsibility, Maya approached it with a blend of analytical rigor and creative problem solving. Creative. I know most of you know this, but the pronunciation can be a little bit difficult sometimes. Creative. Creative means involving the use of imagination or original ideas to produce something new or innovative. An example sentence could be, the artist's creative approach to painting captured the essence of landscape in a unique way. In the story, it was used this way. Despite the daunting nature of this responsibility, Maya approached it with a blend of analytical rigor and creative problem solving. Execution. X -a -q -shun. Execution. Execution. It's the act of carrying out or performing a plan, task, or strategy, often with precision and effectiveness. An example could be the successful execution of the project relied on careful planning and coordination. In the story, it was used this way. The successful execution of the project was a collective achievement celebrated with genuine camaraderie. Genuine camaraderie. <laughs> Gen, you, win, genuine that's a really difficult looking word, but if you break it into those three sounds, gen, you, win, genuine, genuine, camaraderie. So the word com, rod, er, e, camaraderie, genuine camaraderie, genuine camaraderie. It means authentic and heartfelt friendship, mutual trust and goodwill among members of a group or team. An example could be the team's genuine camaraderie contributed to a positive work environment and increased productivity. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The successful execution of the project 
was a collective achievement celebrated with genuine camaraderie. Strategic, another difficult word for many to pronounce. So let's break it down. Strategic, 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 relating to the identification and pursuit of long-term goals or objectives, often involving careful planning, analysis, and decision-making. An example sentence could be, the company's strategic expansion into new markets was guided by thorough market research. Thorough. That's it. Thorough. Thorough. <laughs> in the story, it was used in this sentence. Your leadership and strategic insights have been pivotal to our success, Mr. Smith lauded, acknowledging her contribution. Lauded. Even though it's L-A-U, it really comes out like law. Law, dead. Lauded. Lauded. It means praised or commended someone highly, often publicly for their achievements or contributions. Mr. Smith said something very nice publicly here. The CEO lauded the team for their exceptional performance during the challenging quarter. In the story, it was used like this. Your leadership and strategic insights have been pivotal to our success, Mr. Smith lauded, acknowledging her contribution. Acknowledging, act, null, edge, in, acknowledging, acknowledging. There's a word that many people know, very few people use. I want you to use these words, acknowledging. Recognizing or accepting the truth or existence of something, expressing gratitude or appreciation for someone's actions or contributions. An example could be, she acknowledged the importance of teamwork in achieving the company's goals. In the story, it was, your leadership and strategic insights have been pivotal to our success, Mr. Smith lauded, acknowledging her contribution. Recounted. 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 It means to tell or narrate in detail, to give a detailed account of past events or experiences. She recounted her journey to success during the interview. In the story, it was used in this sentence. In the quiet of the evening, Maya recounted her achievements to her mother, her voice, a mixture of pride and humility. 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 Beautiful quality to have. The quality of being humble or modest. The absence of pride or arrogance. An example could be, despite her success, she remained grounded and approached others with humility. In the story, it was used in this sentence. In the quiet of the evening, Maya recounted her achievements to her mother, her voice, a mixture of pride and humility. Fruition. Yes, I know. It looks like fruit, but not pronounced that way. Fru-ish-un. Fruition. 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 It means the point at which a plan or project is realized or completed. The state of bearing fruit or coming to fruition. An example could be, after years of hard work, their dream finally came to fruition with the opening of their restaurant. In the story, it was part of this great sentence. Reflecting on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, Maya contemplated the transformative arc of her experiences, from navigating initial uncertainties to embracing a leadership role. Her growth was emblematic of a profound personal, and professional evolution that had come to fruition. Oh, say that sentence a few times. Synergy. Most everybody knows synergy. If you're in business, you get this. sin er -G. Pronunciation, sometimes difficult, but synergy. It means the interaction or cooperation of two or more elements to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. An example could be the team's synergy 
led to innovative solutions that exceeded individual contributions. In the story, it was used this way. This evolution from an outsider to a valued team member was marked by mutual respect and shared aspirations, ultimately resulting in a synergy that propelled their collective success. Palpable. <laughs> I will admit, I have not said this word very often in my life, but I have said it. <laughs> and it made me smile as a crazy word that you should see to at least be aware. If you don't want to ever want to use it, it's okay, but you should be aware. There's lots of crazy words out there. Palpable. 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 So intense as it seems almost tangible or capable of being touched, easily perceptible, noticeable. Like this. This example is great. The tension in the room was palpable as they awaited the announcement. It's like you could touch it. It was so tense. In the story, the pride in her mother's voice was palpable. A warm affirmation of Maya's inherent capabilities. Oh, beautiful. Affirmation. Af, firm, a, shun. Affirmation. Affirmation. The action or process of affirming or stating something positively. The assertion or confirmation of the truth or validity of something. Validity is a great word. His success was an affirmation of his hard work and dedication. In the story, it was used this way. The pride in her mother's voice was palpable. A warm affirmation of Maya's inherent capabilities. Inherent capabilities. Again, you don't see these two words together all the time, but they fit really nicely here. In, hair, ent, inherent, capability. T's. Inherent capabilities. Inherent capabilities. Inherent capabilities. It means skills, talents, or qualities that are characteristic or naturally present within a person. An example could be her inherent capabilities in problem solving and leadership were evident from a young age. In the story, it was used in this sentence. The pride in her mother's voice was palpable a warm affirmation of Maya's inherent capabilities. A beacon of determination. Beacon of determination. Not determination, but determination. Beacon of determination. Beacon of determination. A beacon of determination. It means a shining example or symbol of unwavering resolve, persistence, or perseverance in pursuing a goal or overcoming obstacles. An example could be, despite facing numerous setbacks, she remained a beacon of determination for her team. In the story, it was used like this. Your journey is a beacon of determination and resilience, Maya. Your achievements are a reflection of your inner strength. Her mother conveyed resilience. Re, sil, yen. Resilience. 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 The capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. The ability to withstand or bounce back from adversity. An example sentence could be, despite facing many challenges, her resilience helped her stay strong and keep moving forward. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Your journey is a beacon of determination and resilience, Maya. Reflection of. Re, fleck, shun. Reflection. Reflection. Reflection of. A representation or indication of something often revealing or mirroring its true nature or qualities. An example could be his success as a reflection of his dedication and hard work. 
In the story, it was part of this sentence. Your achievements are a reflection of your inner strength, her mother conveyed. And then there's reflecting on. And reflecting on, same pronunciation, reflecting, reflecting on. It means thinking carefully and deeply about something, often in order to gain insight or understanding. An example would be she spent the evening reflecting on her accomplishments and planning her next steps. In the story, it was used this way, reflecting on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, Maya contemplated the transformative arc of her experience. Solitude. 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 Solitude means the state of being alone or secluded from others, a peaceful or quiet place or condition. An example would be she enjoyed the solitude of the countryside, away from the noise and bustle of the city. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Reflecting on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, Maya contemplated the transformative arc of her experiences. Contemplated. It's a really good word. Contemplated. 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 To think deeply or carefully about something, often with the intention of gaining insight or understanding. An example could be, she sat quietly and contemplated the meaning of life. In the story, it was used again in this sentence, reflecting on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, Maya contemplated the transformative arc of her experience. Transformative arc. Again, you don't see these words together all the time, but in the story, it fits fits well. So let's go through it. Transformative, transformative, arc. Just like Noah's Ark, arc. It means the significant and profound change or development over a period of time, often leading to personal growth or evolution. An example could be his journey through adversity marked a transformative arc in his life, leading to greater resilience and self-awareness. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Reflecting on her journey from the solitude of her apartment, Maya contemplated the transformative arc of her experiences. Uncertainties. Uncertainties uncertainties, uncertainties, situations or circumstances that are not truly known, predictable, or determined, events that are characterized by doubt, ambiguity, there's a great word for you, ambiguity, or lack of clarity. An example could be the uncertainties of the future made her anxious about what lay ahead. In the story, was used in this sentence. From navigating initial uncertainties to embracing a leadership role, her growth was emblem emblematic of a profound personal and professional evolution. See? Not just AI right there. I can make mistakes. Emblematic. 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 Emblematic means symbolic of or representing something, often serving as a characteristic, example, or illustration. An example could be the company's success story was emblematic of the resilience and innovation of its employees. In the story, it was used like this, from navigating initial uncertainties to embracing a leadership role. Her growth was emblematic of a profound personal and professional evolution. Narrative. 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 It means a story or account of events, experiences, or a series of interconnected events, often presented in a particular order or format. 
An example could be the novel provided a compelling narrative of, of love and loss set against the backdrop of war. In the story, as used in this sentence, Maya's narrative is a compelling exploration of the dynamics of professional growth in a globalized, linguistically diverse business environment. Whew. Compelling. If this is not in your vocabulary, you need to get it into your vocabulary. It's a great word. Compelling. Like, really a great word. It means evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerful or irresistible way. Convincing, persuasive. The speaker delivered a compelling argument that persuaded many to support the cause. In the story, it is used this way. Maya's narrative is a compelling exploration of the dynamics of professional growth in a globalized, linguistically diverse business environment. Exploration. 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 The act of investigating, studying, or examining something in detail, often with the aim of discovering new information or gaining insight. An example could be the expedition set out on an exploration of the uncharted territory. In the story, it was used like this. Maya's narrative is a compelling exploration of the dynamics of professional growth in a globalized, linguistically diverse business environment. Dynamics. 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 The forces, factors, or elements that interact within a system or situation, often influencing its behavior or development. An example could be the dynamics of the team changed after the new manager was appointed. In the story, it was used this way. Maya's narrative is a compelling exploration of the dynamics of professional growth in a globalized, linguistically diverse business environment. Globalized, globalized, globalized. It's a great word to put in your speaking vocabulary. I think you know what it means, but do you really say it? So it means characterized by interconnectedness and integration on a global scale, often, return, often referring to economic, cultural, and technological exchanges between countries and regions. An example could be the company operates in a globalized market with customers and suppliers located around the world. In the story, it was used this way. Maya's narrative is a compelling exploration of the dynamics of professional growth in a globalized, linguistically diverse business environment. Diverse. Diverse. You can be diverse if you want. Diverse showing a great deal of variety or difference, consisting of or involving people or things from different backgrounds or with different characteristics. The team was diverse, with members from various cultural and educational backgrounds. In the story, it was used like this. Maya's narrative is a compelling exploration of the dynamics of professional growth in a globalized, linguistically diverse business environment. Perseverance. Per-se-ver-ence. Perseverance. It's a lot easier than what it looks like. Just perseverance. It's a great word. The steadfast perseverance in the face of difficulties or obstacles, the quality of continuing to pursue a goal despite challenges or setbacks. An example could be her perseverance in learning the language eventually led to fluency. In the story, it was used this way. It underscores the pivotal role of perseverance, the educational value of navigating linguistic barriers, and the importance of a supportive professional network. Ultimately, 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 
means referring to the final result, outcome, or conclusion of a series of events or actions in the end or eventually. An example could be, ultimately, the success of the project depended on effective teamwork and collaboration. In the story, it was used in this sentence. Ultimately, it serves as a poignant reminder that true professional competency transcends linguistic proficiency, rooted instead in the ability to communicate effectively and adaptively in diverse settings. Wow. <laughs> a poignant reminder. Poignant reminder. It doesn't look anything like poignant, but that's what it is. Poignant. Poignant. Poignant's a really good word. It's an eloquent word, let me tell you. And it fits really well with reminder. So a poignant reminder means a strong or deeply moving reminder, often evoking a sense of sadness, empathy, or reflection. An example could be, the photograph was a poignant reminder of happier times. In the story, again, in this amazing sentence, ultimately, it serves as a poignant reminder that true professional competency transcends linguistic proficiency rooted instead in the ability to communicate effectively and adaptively in diverse settings. <laughs> competency. com p t n c Competency. Competency means the ability to do something successfully or efficiently, having the necessary knowledge, skills, or qualities to perform a task or job effectively. The example sentence could be, his competency in project management made him the ideal candidate for the position. Again, it's in this amazing sentence. Ultimately, it serves as a poignant reminder that true professional competency transcends linguistic proficiency, rooted instead in the ability to communicate effectively and adaptively in diverse settings. Transcends. Transcends. We've seen this before, but it, it fits so well in the sentence. Let's do it again. Transcends goes beyond or surpasses the limits or boundaries of something, extends or exceeds. An example could be, his love for music transcends language barriers, touching people of all cultures. Again, in this sentence, join me in this sentence. Say this with me. Ultimately, it serves as a poignant reminder that true professional competency transcends linguistic proficiency rooted instead in the ability to communicate effectively and adaptively in diverse settings. Are you ready? We got two left. Are you still with me? <laughs> I wonder how many are here. If you're still with me, type in the comments. I made it to the last two. Just, just let me know that you were here with two words left. Write me a comment, show me the love, and I'll show you the love. I hope you're here. <laughs> I'd just I'd be so proud of you if you got here. Rooted, it means firmly established or deeply ingrained in something, having its basis or origin. Example could be her values are rooted in her upbringing and cultural background. This sentence again. Ultimately, it serves as a poignant reminder that true professional competency transcends linguistic proficiency, rooted instead in the ability to communicate effectively and adaptively in diverse settings. Are you sad? Here's our last word. <laughs> adaptively. 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 Let's celebrate this word. Say it with me. Go through these definitions with me in a way that involves being able to adjust to new conditions, situations, or demands. An example could be she responded adaptively to the changes in the market 
shifting her strategy accordingly. Here we go, one more time. Ultimately, it serves as a poignant reminder that true professional competency transcends linguistic proficiency, rooted instead in the ability to communicate effectively and adaptively in diverse settings. You made it this far. Congratulations. Proud of you. If you're still here, use this long, long, long video. Use it as a course. Speak like I speak. I don't want you to just learn words. I want you to use them. I want you to speak with confidence. Remember, we build confidence this way. We build confidence because you understand the word. You understand the pronunciation. You understand how to use it. And then you can speak it with confidence in a sentence, in a story. You need to speak these words. Please, please, please don't just learn them. I will put a link <laughs> to the PDF in the description below. Congratulations if you got this far. You're amazing. You're absolutely amazing if you got this far. You're going to speak so confidently. I'm going to be here with you the whole ride. Stay tuned for episode three. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share your comments, and I also invite you to learn your Business English Confidence Score. You'll find the link in the description below this video.